Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 247. Google I.O. 2015. This Twit Live special is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for the right payments API, check out the Braintree V.0 SDK. With one simple integration, your customers get every way to pay. To learn more and to try out the sandbox, go to braintreepayments.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Uh, at the Twit Brickhouse Studios in Petaluma, watching, as you can see right now, uh, Moscone West in San Francisco. Go ahead and show them that, Jason. Uh, where Google I.O. is about to begin the Google Developer Conference for 2015. Very exciting. Uh, joining us now for our live coverage, Aaron Newcomb. Great yes. to see you from All About Android. Thanks for having me. This and exciting. NetApp. Good That's to right. see you. There's that lovely EDM. <laughs> you said Dieter Bone said I don't have any. What did he say? <laughs> he said I ran out of things to say about the music. I'm just sad about it now. From the Verge. <laughs> also joining us via Skype, Ronxo, Ron Richards, also from hey. All About Android. Good to have How's you. The Very Android excited. gurus in house. And look who's here. Longtime Twig host and a startup founder at thinkup.com. Gina Trapani is also here. Hi, Gina. Howdy. Great to have Exciting. you. Exciting. Good to have, good to be here. Yeah, this is exciting. All right, what do you think is going to happen, Gina? Predictions before we get going. Just a few minutes oh. away. I want lots of juicy Android news. I want to know what M stands for. I want to hear about Android Pay. I want better permissions and notifications, especially. And I want I want more, uh, better, more better wear Android Wear. That's my more that's my mo, more better wear. <laughs> more better wear. That's my 140 character version. <laughs> and you said you want to see something as cheesy but fascinating as cardboard. Yeah, yeah. I don't want another Google Glass skydive. I don't want another, you know, Death Star. I don't even want another wave demo. I want another cardboard. Not cardboard specifically, but something kind of quirky and out of left field and 20% time that's, like, fun and awesome. Aaron Newcomb, what do you think we're going to see today? Uh, what are you looking for? Well, I'm hoping for some news in the home automation front. So, you know, the, uh, Google bought Nest a while back. And, uh, you know, assumingly they've been working on something behind the scenes. So I'd really like to see... Uh, then branch out in the home automation department. So that's what I'm hoping for, as well as upgrades to Chromecast. Uh, there's been some rumors that there's going to be a new version of Chromecast coming, uh, which is great. Everybody seems to love Chromecast. I certainly love it. Um, so I'd like to see Chromecast 2. Chromecast 2, Chromecast I think, 2. is in the cards. Uh, at least certainly with Android TV, something's going to happen, too. Something's got to happen. Yeah. How about you, Ron? What do you think? Well, like Gina, I want to see some stuff with Android Wear, but I actually want to see some actual wearables, like a jacket or some sort of clothes, something different than a watch. Um, but I'm holding out. I know it's a rumor, and I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm holding out for a new Nexus phone. I want to see a 5 or 5.5-inch uh, new Nexus device get announced. Ooh, so, yeah. We need for. we need that, don't we? Yeah. Yes, uh, I do. <laughs> Ron, uh, uh, Mike Elgin is uh, in the audience there. So is uh, All About Android's Jason Howell. Keep your eye peeled for them. They'll report back uh, after Google I.O., but we're going to give you live keynote coverage. Just a word uh, of warning. We'll talk all over this thing. That's what we do. If you want to watch the stream live, it's on YouTube, on the Google Developers channel, and I'm sure other places as well, and you can watch it without our interruptions. But if you're interested in the commentary of us for people, this is the place to be. Five, four, three... See, will they begin on time? Two, one. I expect, actually, and I was told there'll be some big cardboard announcements, believe it or not. Google's, <laughs> really? This is Google's VR platform, and uh, yeah. I expect to see more. I think we're going to see a lot with gaming, actually, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And VR, VR will be a piece of that, but mm -hmm. gaming will be a big thing. Very Matrix-y uh, yeah. on-screen presentation. Yeah, Earlier, they were playing Pong. Remember, last year, they had a giant Rube Goldberg clock counting down the time. The problem with doing that is you have to start on time because when the clock goes over, <laughs> right. you got to go this way. Oh, look at the guy with the Android helmet. Oh, man. I don't think I've seen a woman yet. Have we seen Jeff Jarvis, though? Is he there? In the Jeff is also, I forgot. Je oh, there's a right woman. Right on cue. They, they were listening. Oh, there we go. 
I do see a lot of Nexus sixes in the audience. Remember, you have to uh, have to have a Nexus oh, yeah. six if you want to be a Google Fi participant. Yep. I wonder if they'll talk more about Google Fi, Google's wireless play. Yeah, I haven't today. heard much in the rumor mill about yeah. uh, Google Fi. The Verge says more selfie sticks than Google Glass. <laughs> so, <laughs> and somebody in the chat room is saying, "Gee, I'd love to be there live." It's true. There is something about going to events like this, whether it's Apple or Google. Pretty much just that, Apple yeah. or Google. Yeah. <laughs> it makes us yeah. a lot there's, of excitement there's an and energy. fun. There's yeah. an energy and a vibe. Like, that room right now is just vibrating. Yeah. Everyone's so excited. But that's actually a good reason to watch us, because I always feel, and maybe it's just me, when I go to these things, I get sucked in to all the hype and excitement, you know? And I'm like, yes, Google is so great. But then when you're, yeah. you know, removed from it, like we are, I think yeah. you actually have a little there's bit better reality, perspective. There's a reality distortion so. feeling there. Exactly. There's the big console at which I guess they were playing Pong, and then that Pong game was being presented up on the screen. There's going to be a moment where they're going to play a really heart-wrenching video about how the internet has changed the world and Google's been such a big part of that. And that's the point at which they completely have me when I'm present in the room. Uh, so it'll be fun to watch it with a little perspective with you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We, you know, I think we also get swept up a little bit. And that's mm -hmm. part of the fun of these, uh, you know, it's after... It's impossible not to, yeah. yeah. And so you know, you, that's another warning. We may get okay. over exuberant about something that in, you know, the cold hard light of day tomorrow will be, uh, right. yeah. <laughs> over exuberance warning. That's I a thinking? good one. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Irrational like, exuberance is? ahead. Yes. I wonder I wonder if that remote Pong station is tipping their hand towards the gaming aspect, if, if that's going to play in their multi-screen gaming kind of play. Yeah, I think I, so. Because yeah, you got to imagine everything is there for a reason. And so if Pong is there, it's there yes. for a reason. It's a statement. Yeah. And the, yeah. This wraparound screen that they've got going mm -hmm. on, that, they didn't have yeah. that last year. And this that, is that gorgeous. Is total yeah, wrap it's pretty around. cool. Yeah. Yeah. VR, right? I'm telling oh, yeah, you. Yeah, VR, you're right. It's going to be all about VR yep. today. Yep. Yep. VR and gaming, apparently. Yep. Yeah, see, if they're going to go, they're going to it again. The yeah. finals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, uh, I was a yeah. Pong champion at Google I.O. Yeah, I. <laughs> oh, that's kind of wild, though. Oh, that's, that's awesome. enormous. Look at that. <laughs> oh, Look at that. That's incredible. Yeah. Cameras having a hard time keeping up with it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Isn't that cool? Pong VR, ladies and gentlemen. You you saw it here first. <laughs> that doesn't look like if you were sitting in the audience that that would be easy to, to keep track of. No, I hope you. they're not looking at the uh, big screens, but uh, local look at their screen. eyes. I mean, they have a big, they have a big wide screen in front of them, but you can, they're, the screen's so wide you can see their eyes tracking it all yeah. the way, like you know, two yeah, feet across. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. It's close too. It is. Are these Googlers? You think? Probably. This is their twenty percent project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have devised a way. All right, let's talk about uh, Silicon Valley this week and Hooli. Oh, I mean, this is an episode of writing itself. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hooli is, of course, the Google analog uh, on the uh, HBO comedy uh, Half Hour Silicon Valley, which, because I think partly because Dan Lyons is writing for it, is a lot of insider stuff. You saw mm -hmm. Kevin Rose kind of lampooned this week on the episode. <laughs> poor Kevin. Although, I'm not oh, sure if it's poor company. Kevin. I think. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, he was in great company. That, yeah. I would have taken that as a tremendous compliment. Yeah. They, uh, they, it was uh, after a massive failure of Hooli's video playback. Look, the game's over. We have a winner, and he gets a giant plush Android doll. <laughs> nice. And, oh, nice pixelated 8-bit. Yeah. Uh, Pixely. Nice. Oh, uh, okay. That's cool. That was intentional pixelation. Oh, yeah. Minecraft, anyone? All right, the lights dim. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, this is pretty cool. Wow, I am I am kind of excited. This is how it should be. Though. Oh yeah, absolutely. You should wow them. Oh man, because you can, because you're very very big wealthy. Company. You got a captive audience. Yep. Look at look at all those cameras taking pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Last year's affair was a little drab. I think this is Google coming back strong. How many Meerkat and Periscope streams are going yeah. right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, why? I think the because network there is doing very well. You can watch HD. Yeah, right exactly. there on the internet. Norma Arm. Right. 
Norma arm. Oh, wait a minute. That that looks like a 3D rendering. What are we seeing here? What is Norma arm? Quick, Google it. Yeah, Google it quick. Is that a... Uh... Oh, that must be Oh, a, these uh, are galaxies. Galaxy or... Or meteors mm -hmm. or... Android An in arm space. in the Milky Way. The right. Norma arm is a minor spiral arm of Milky Way extending around mm -hmm. its central hub region. What if Android M is meteor? Meteor. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Not a dessert. Yeah, it's not a dessert, though. <laughs> yeah, but so. Meteor, unfortunately, is uh, not available as a uh, JavaScript uh, framework. It's uh, quite popular, actually. I like it. Although, that didn't stop them. That's why desserts, though, are safe. You can't really mm -hmm. trademark a dessert. Right. Neptune. So we're going, we're coming. Are we going to, we're going? heading towards we're Earth? To Earth? Yeah. Yeah, we're heading towards oh, Earth. They started oh, in the oh, middle of our galaxy. Milky Way. Milky, Milky Way. Way. Milky Way. Yes. You did it. Yes. Good job, it's, Aaron. It's a Milky dessert Way. and a universe. That's right. That's right. Yep. <laughs> a galaxy. Not Milky a universe. Andy Todd Bob is our, uh, he's going to keep us on his galaxy. Saturn. It'll be the pivot name from, from Candy to Space. I love Milky Way. Yeah. And it does come from Mars, right? Yep. Yeah. Milky Way. Do you think they'll license? Yes. Yeah. It's another Kit Kat. Yeah, are we going to have a, a Milky Way on the phone now? I think you nailed it. I think I'm going to buy you a McCafe Ooh, after thank the show you. today. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, evil Take IRC in our chat room says, hey, I said that yesterday. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> First. First. <laughs> Moz. Beautiful. I, I can't imagine what this looks like in, you know, 180 surround. Yeah, this is, this yeah, is this cool. This is crazy. I love how they're using the camera work in the uh, in the facility. The beautiful jib, obviously, and somebody really knows what they're doing. And there we go, Planet Earth. Oh, my. Apollo 8. Oh, what happened? Everything went dark. Was there a power outage? They're announcing somebody, probably. Maybe. Pink, Pink Floyd. Floyd. It's the dark side this of the moon. Serious lead up, you guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Boom. Back with the... Oh, oh it's an elevator. Minute, space elevator. They're going to announce a space elevator. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, how long has this lead up been? Haven't we done the countdown? Yeah, I know. Wow. What was the countdown to the countdown, Gina? Oh, right. Now we're inside between, the factory. Between the fly-in. This is where the bits are made. Well, they've, really, they've really turned up the drama this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder how the sound is in the building. Is it dramatically surround? And, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Gotta be. Oh, they stitch together beautifully. Look at that. Just you have to make room for an exit sign, but other than that. For a room that big, the sound is actually pretty good at Moscone. They do a good job here. Yeah. This is the peak of all of our hopes and dreams, folks. Enjoy it. <laughs> That's right. Here we go. <laughs> we click, click, clicking up live. that roller coaster. This is what we live for all year. <laughs> <laughs> right now, anything can happen. <laughs> anything. Yep. <laughs> Another countdown? What? Oh, There's the countdown <laughs> stopped at seven. 007, of course. Of course. As one remembers from Goldfinger, the final count on the atomic bomb that Oric Goldfinger had placed inside Fort Knox <laughs> to destroy the world's gold reserves. What? Actually, I think I mixed up movies there. Sorry. This, what the hell now? This is Games. like a little chrome farm. This is the cow level. Google does have Stop a cow level. There's an oh, Uber. Gets into it, an Uber. Was it an Uber? Yeah, it had an it Uber. Was. The U yeah, it had the an Uber oh, really? on it. Uh, this is, logo. That's interesting. Uh, HTML5 HTML5 Island. 100 miles to Look code. VLC. VLC, VLC, cone, VLC cones, yep. Yep. <laughs> is this oh, the, oh, you guys are good. Android. We got a W. We got a word kick. These are apps. We have yeah, emojis. These are all, yeah. uh, these are all So this Android is material, and it's material right now, right? So we're looking at M. This is all about Milky Way. Oh. What the hell? Oh, there was a kayak. Oh. Bytor in our chat says, actually, Leo, that was not 007, that was 007. I think you have a mistake in there. There's sheets. There's Airbnb. Airbnb. 
Yep, drive. This is this looks like the it's Silicon Valley open. Is this the <laughs> island? Is this the island that Larry Page talked oh, about this so is eloquently island. last year? The island of lost yes. design. It looks a little bit like the Silicon Valley. Uh, That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we got Fit. We got Fitbit. We got some Map My Ride. There's uh, Health or yeah, Google, Google Fit. Google Fit. Yeah. I like Google Fit. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> I do. I, it likes you too. I like Google Fit. Whoa! Follow the bouncing ball. More countdown seven eight. Now they're counting up. Yeah. I mean, this is. They like numbers at Google. Apps. They're a data-driven company. Oh, that was some code. Look at that. That's some code there, baby. Map, new map. What is that? <laughs> Gina, what's that code mean? I. I uh, Quick. Uh, uh, That's it. That by that was, looked like Go. I'm pretty sure it was Go. It did look like Go. Yeah. Ooh, what does it say? Here's to what you build next. Of course, developers Welcome conference. Welcome to the stage, Senior Vice President of Products, Sundar Pichai. Of course. The man secretly in charge of Google, Sundar Pichai, whose ascendancy has been quite rapid. And he's wearing, it looks like a... Uh, Good morning. 360. Welcome to Google I.O. Is it a 360? It looks big. Thank you for joining us today. I know there were long lines. Thank you for yeah. making it in. Yeah, it looks... Uh, we are being joined well, it's like, by... It might be an Urbane. Yeah, I think it's an Urbane. So oh, yeah. welcome to all And we're in the same watch. Well. In... A As always, we live stream I.O. to many, many locations around the world. In fact, to over 460 locations in 90 countries across six continents. Let's say hello to a couple of them. First is to Mexico City. Wow. Looks like a soccer match. Bienvenidos. <laughs> <laughs> Are they Sore doing that way? Sore subject. I know, yeah. Uh, FIFA. FIFA. Let's move on. We are moving to <laughs> Munich in Germany. Even Sundar has Guten Tag. Yeah. There you go. A little better dressed crowd. Oh, some Google fans in Germany. <laughs> it's and very World Cup to a small town, Juja, outside of Nairobi. Wow. In Kenya. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's Look cool. at that. The next billion, right? Yep. There's a college there, and so we have many students joining us. Uh, it's. <laughs> 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 it's really exciting to be here today. This is, of course, the moment of mobile and the smartphone. We've been talking about the mobile revolution for a while, but just since last it's year, really emphasized what a global IO, company. Even looking at the uh, audience, what a global who, company. For the Google. first time, have adopted a smartphone, and they're beginning the journey of computing. So it's incredibly special the moment the next we live billion, in. Gina said it. So at Google, we've always been working hard to build products for everyone in the world. We try to look at technology and see by using technology, can we make a difference to a fundamental problem in people's lives? That's how we did Google Search. Google Search worked the same for everyone in the world, whether you were a rural kid in Indonesia or a professor at a world-class research center, you had the same search results at your fingertips as long as you had access to a computer and connectivity. We went on to solve many more problems we asked, why does Gmail have to be so slow? Why couldn't you search through all your email? That led us to Gmail. We noticed people were really interested in the real world around them. It's kind that of a history of Google. Google Maps, YouTube. Yeah. Over time, we built two computing platforms. Chrome, because we noticed browsers were very slow and not safe to use. It's evolution Android, here. Mm -hmm. And the story, frankly. Yeah. The yeah. fragmentation and how difficult it was to build mobile phones. Not, not merely the history, but the, confusing. the kind of the thread the lines experience was of very Google's thinking. We brought products yeah. together in the form of Android. Each of these products today work at scale for everyone in the world. And we are privileged to serve over a billion users in each of these products. Wow. So today, in this moment of mobile, at I.O., we're going to talk about two things. The first is how we Each are evolving our computing platforms, not just for mobile, but beyond mobile for a multi-screen world. The second is how Google, core to our mission of organizing the world's information, is really evolving the mobile experience for users. So let's get started with our computing platforms and Android. 
Android is working at scale. Last year, eight out of 10 phones that were shipped were based on Android. 80% of the global market. The breadth and depth of what we see in Android is just stunning. <clears throat> we just want to visualize it and internalize it for a minute. So behind me, you're going to see a dot, a single dot for every Android active phone out there. Oh, no. And oh. we are representing the range with colors. Blue stands for high-end phones. High pixel Holy density, cow. high RAM. Phones That's like a data Samsung visualization. Galaxy, S6, Holy LG yeah. G4, etc. Wow. wow. Orange is at the Look other at end of the spectrum, what you see in emerging markets. Small, affordable, the wow. entry-level smartphones. It's all being there sucked into Mountain View. There are over 4,000 distinct <laughs> devices you see in Android. And wow. the range of what we see is what we really embrace. In fact, Look at that map. when we say wow. be together, not the same, that is precisely what we mean. We want to make Probably sure a one -to -one we leave correlation no between one GDP or we want to provide you know, average for users income. The way yeah, I was going like to say, look how dark Africa is. So that it mm -hmm. works for them. Next slide. Next slide. That's enough. So today, thank you. We're also <laughs> going to talk about how Android is not only evolving for mobile. Was this Larry Ellison? But how we are <laughs> Next taking slide. Computing beyond mobile as well. Last year at Google I/O, we talked about the, yeah, Android evolving there. to many, many form factors. So let's see how we are doing. We have to remember with the phone, we started with one phone, and today we serve 400 OEMs, 500 carriers. <laughs> Apple's got bands, we've got bands. <laughs> the same journey is underway in each of these areas. For Android Wear, we started with two models. Today we are up to over seven models, mm -hmm. and there are many more to come. The team has been evolving the software continuously, and you'll get a full update on that today. Android Auto. We announced this last year as an open automotive alliance. Just last week, Hyundai announced that its Sonata models are available in US dealerships right now. GM announced 13 of its Chevrolet models for 2016 will be based on Android Auto. Volkswagen just announced this week its entire lineup for 2016, including Passat and the common models in Europe and North America, is based on Android Auto. Ford. GM, Mitsubishi, we have, we have over 35 car manufacturers beginning to ship, and so we'll have a whole range of vehicles coming in the market soon. Android TV, we announced last year as a reference device, ADT-1. Today, we have Sony and Sharp televisions shipping in the US, Philips, which is very popular in Europe, and many more models coming. There are many, many streaming consoles, NVIDIA Shield, is a great console, yeah, Razer Shield, has one, the new Shield, and yeah. the range of content we are seeing in really Android impressive. TV is pretty breathtaking. We have grown our user base there. We have doubled in the last three months alone. Of course, for TV, for televisions, 17 million Chromecast solution in the form of Chromecast. Wow. People have wow. bought over That's 17 a million devices. Pressed not a lot of money at 35 right. bucks, but a significant Still, presence. That's my that's uh, eyeballs. Well, especially when you think that Roku, All of this is powered total by Roku sales, content ecosystem think in less than a million. Hmm. And today I'm very excited wow. to announce HBO Now for the first time. I'm surprised time that 20,000 oh, apps. That's big. They, that was an Apple exclusive Android. until now. Ooh. So they using cash. Excellent. Nice. Yeah, that's good. I'm that's sorry. Good. Roku has 10 million you sales. Can watch your favorite episodes be Game million. of Thrones. So it's still significant. Yeah. Season, or maybe even your favorite episode of Silicon Valley. There <laughs> we go. There's the mention. And they love it, too. This doesn't make it in there. So we always start I.O. by giving an update of our... So we knew the HBO Now exclusive, exclusive was just for three months, and that, everything we you know, confirms Last year it. with L. M, develop a preview. There we go. L was a major release for us in which we tackled many, many form factors. Remember, for Google didn't... We've gone back to the basics. We've really focused on polish and quality. We've literally solved thousands of bugs, more importantly, thought through every detail to make it better. To give you a preview of the upcoming M release, let me invite Dave Burke onto the stage. I'm going to talk about battery optimization. Yes, please. Yep. They always do. It's always batteries. Thanks, so this year, we've made a conscious decision to focus on quality end to end. And today, I'm excited to share a preview of the new M release of Android. The central theme of M is improving the core user experience of Android. Our focus is on product excellence. Everything from squashing thousands of bugs 
to rethinking fundamental aspects of how the platform has worked for years. Now, one of the unique and amazing things about Android is that it's an open platform. We, we make the source code available to everyone, from hobbyists to the world's largest device manufacturers. And this has enabled device makers, both small and large, to innovate and iterate Android, often many years ahead of the competition. With M, we're excited to be able to fold in some of these improvements that we've seen in the ecosystem into the official Android platform so we can make them more widely available to users and app developers alike. So let me take a few minutes and walk you through six key areas where we've really improved the core user experience in M. Now, one of the things Android users tell us they love is their ability to customize and really control the behavior of their phones. So in M, we're bringing this approach to app permissions. Yeah. Yep, there it is. So with app permissions, we're giving users meaningful choice and control over the data they care about. You don't have to agree to permissions that don't make sense to you. And we're accomplishing this through a few big changes. First, we're greatly simplifying app permissions to a smaller set of easily understood things, like location, camera, microphone. Second, apps will now ask you for permission the first time you try to use a feature, instead of asking during app installation time. Hmm. As, as you use, that's the right way that's, to do it. That's very iOS-esque, so, right? That's how they do it. Let's take a look at how this yeah. could work with yeah. WhatsApp. Now, keep in mind, when I install the app, I wasn't asked to grant any permissions up front. OK, so let's say I'm in the app, and I want to send a voice message. When I press the mic button, the app makes a request to the system to access the microphone, which then brings up this permission prompt. The permission directly reflects the use case. And this is a one-time request. And of course, I, as a user, can allow or deny the request on a pair of permission basis. Now that I've granted the permission, I can hold the mic button and record a message, like so. So one of the things we've heard from our users is the desire to change or revoke an already granted permission. So at M, I can now go into settings, choose the app, see what permissions it has, and even modify them. I can also go. And I can also go the other way. So I can choose a permission, say microphone, and see which apps have access to it. That's cool. Now, That's cool. for developers, the new app permissions apply to apps compiled against the M SDK. Legacy apps targeting SDK versions before M will behave as before. One of the really nice side effects of the new permission model for app developers is it's faster to get users up and running in your app. We also know that with the old permission model, that adding a new permission to your app can affect your update adoption. Mm -hmm. With the new permission model, updates are seamless because user involvement is deferred until right when it's needed. Oh, that's okay, great. So that's app permissions. This is a pretty big departure since Android 1.0, but it's a more intuitive model for users as a much more seamless app install process for app developers. The danger here, though, is that it so cheeses that, off users, right? The if they keep getting asked over and over again, oh, yeah, you know, do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? I mean, that's what people hated about uh, uh, Windows for so long, especially Windows 8. Consume. They had to keep authorizing things. That's a lot of the responsibility on the user. Mm -hmm. It is. As opposed to the developer. Yeah. And we'll know what those things mean, but will the average user know what, what they're doing? Or are they just going to say, allow every time? Does it end up being a EULA? Yeah. And web views have this nice property that they enable you to make the transition to web content really seamless. You can make it feel like one app. But while web views are powerful, they have some downsides. It means developers have to get into the business of building a browser, which is a complex and time-consuming thing to do well. And for the user, browsing content in web view means you lose some of the things that make users' lives really easy on the web, like save passwords or logged in sessions. So Chrome Custom Tabs is a new feature that gives developers a way to harness all of Chrome's capabilities while still keeping control of the look and feel of the experience. And we've been working with our friends over at Pinterest on this. And I'd like to show you a sample of what's possible. So here I am in the Pinterest app. Let's tap on something interesting. Now when I tap on a web link at the bottom, you'll notice that there's a custom transition animation into Chrome Custom Tabs. And remember, this is actually the Chrome browser now running on top of your app. And the custom tab is branded the same color as Pinterest, so it feels like one experience. And you can even see that Pinterest has added a custom button to the toolbar to pin pages. 
Oh, that's pretty cool. And, then, and they can also add additional items to Chrome's overflow menu up at the top right. Oh, that's very I mean, nice. Yeah, I like that. Gives an easy way so it's almost like building like an app Chrome sandwich almost where Chrome so is operating within the application as opposed to yeah, a custom browser. To yeah. Chrome ahead of time to prefetch the content. And of course, the real benefit is for users. With Chrome custom tabs, you're signed into your favorite site since it uses Chrome State. And you get all of Chrome's features, such as safe passwords, all the filling forms, Google Translate, and more. Don't save your and passwords course, in Chrome. They're saved in the clear, security. please. <laughs> so Chrome Custom Tabs is available today on the Chrome Dev channel, and we're excited about rolling it out to use. So I have to use LastPass. Google's Last position pass. is so if somebody's logged onto your computer and can see your passwords, then so they're logged in. They, don't, they do not in any way encrypt yeah. those passwords. Now yeah. I'd like to talk to you about some improvements we're doing when you want to link from an app to another app. And linking is, of course, one of those fundamental principles of the web. It brings different websites together as part of a natural user experience flow. And as more and more web destinations get corresponding rich app experiences, for example, the YouTube app or the Twitter app, we've seen different attempts to enable linking between apps so as to apply those same fundamental principles of the web. Now, Android's intent system already provides a powerful way to enable an app to advertise that it can handle the rendering of a particular link pattern. But one of the limitations of the current system is that when a user selects a web link from somewhere, Android doesn't know whether to show it in the web browser or some other app that claims support for the link. As a result, Android will show the infamous disambiguate dialogue to ask the user to choose. No. Uh, I hate so that dialogue. Yeah. In the M release, we're Always or just Android's once? intent system to provide a more powerful app linking capability. Apps can now add an auto-verify attribute to their application manifest to indicate that they want the links they claim they support to be verified by the platform. The Android platform will then make a request to the web server pointed to by the links at app installation time and look for a file containing the name and signature of the application. This enables Android to verify that the app owns oh. the links it claims it does. So now That's when I as smart. a user tap on a verified link, let's say a Twitter link I received in an email, the Android <laughs> platform will seamlessly write me to the Twitter app with no more disambig dialogue. It kind of leaves third-party developers in the cold, though. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Twitter, Twitter's a terrible example. Yeah, what if I want to use a different client? So may, they may have a URL registration clients. scheme. In fact, I'm sure they do have a URL registration scheme. So okay. any app could register so its URL in the up, as part of the share process. Of I'm sure that that would do it for other apps. Not, which we call yeah, but, it, but, but Twitter wouldn't verify, right? So you're right. still in a situation. Well, it would be your responsibility maybe to verify. Yeah. Or NFC and gingerbread. And postcard emulation which we introduced in KitKat. With Android Pay, users can simply and safely use their Android phone to pay in stores, wherever they see the Android Pay logo or the NFC logo, yep. or indeed in thousands of Android Pay partner apps. Android Pay is focused on simplicity, This is the new name of Wallet. And, and choice. We'll see how it's different Simple, from Wallet. Because all you have to do is unlock your phone like normal, place it in front of the NFC terminal to pay, and there's no need to open any app. It's that easy. It's secure because when you add a card for use with Android Pay, a virtual account number is created, which is then used to process your payment. Your actual card number is not shared with the store during the transaction. Yeah. And you have choice. We built Android Pay as an open platform, so people will be able to choose the most convenient way to activate Android Pay, either through our app or through any supported banking app. And we're working with leading financial institutions so you can securely use your existing debit and credit cards with Android Pay. And of course, we're also working with major US mobile carriers, including AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, to ensure that whenever you buy a new phone, you can walk out the door ready to go. And of course, Android Pay works with any Android device with NFC. Android Pay will work in over 700,000 stores across the US, which accept contactless payments, including retailers such as Macy's, Bloomingdale's, McDonald's, Subway, and much more. Android Pay will also be available in-app from developers selling physical goods and services to help you speed through the checkout process. So leading developers like Lyft and Grubhub and Groupon and more will be offering Android Pay in their app soon. So we're at the start of an exciting journey. We believe the same partnership model that fueled Android's growth from a single device seven years ago to now more than a billion users will enable Android Pay to be successful too. And we're working closely with payment networks, banks, and developers 
to bring mobile. How is is this substantively different from uh, Walmart? With the rollout starting in not Palo functionally. Palo it's it's not functionally. Not functionally, right? So it's really rebranding to yeah. Yeah. Just make it sound like Apple, Apple Pay. Pay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I just want to check. Android Pay gets even better. I mean, I can because do all that stuff he outlined with my Android Google Wallet. Right. My right. Yeah, I see on my phone now. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like just better availability to developers right. yeah. for in-app payments. Right. Fingerprint yeah, support finger is uh, important. Of course, it exists on some phones, but having it in the uh, OS makes a big difference. And that, of course, makes it work with pay. Sensors and devices and exposes a standard API to developers. Yep. So what does this mean? This was well, expected. For one in M, you can use your fingerprint to authorize Android Pay transactions. So let's take a look at this in action. The user simply touches the fingerprint sensor, which unlocks the phone. The phone will then make a secure NFC this looks exchange. Looks a lot like Apple Pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the payment goes through, and you get the Android Pay notification yeah. of the transaction at the top. But again, this is very similar to Wallet. Uh, having fingerprint is great. Yeah. I can't remember if Wallet fingerprint integrates with fingerprint on the S6. It might. Play store purchases. Most importantly, any app developer can make use of the new APIs. Add fingerprints That's great to their news. own apps. And we've been working with lots of our app partners. LastPass already works with APIs. a fingerprint on Galaxy The feedback phones. has been overwhelmingly mm. positive. So for example, let's take a look at the new Target app, which is aiming to release later this year. Now, the user has previously associated their username and password credentials with their fingerprint. And that's a simple and popular design pattern we're seeing with app developers. Now, when the user wants to purchase something, they just present their fingerprint like so, and it will process the payment. Super easy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that was yeah. that was a very nice experience. Yeah. So let's talk about another big area where we've improved in M, and that's power. Now, Android has the always enabled true multitasking mm -hmm. as an open platform for developers, and people love that about Android. But in making the platform exceptionally flexible, there's a trade-off in data freshness and battery, especially if the user installs hundreds of applications. So. In the spirit of improving the core experience, we're changing Android and M to be smarter about managing power through a new feature we call Doze. Now, many of us have first to user patterns with our devices, especially with tablets. For example, you might leave your tablet on your coffee table or your nightstand all day. This is uh, the consolidating of wake locks, locks that I thought they were doing in with Lollipop and Android maybe even earlier. Android significant motion detection to motion learn if detection. a device has been left unattended for an extended period of time. Oh, that's that clever. Case, it will Very nice. Back off background yeah. activity to go into a deeper sleep state. So what we're doing is we're trading off a little bit of app freshness. When you for sleep, it does. Battery life. That's good. And we call it dozing because while the device is asleep, it's still possible for the device to trigger real-time alarms or to respond to incoming chat requests. This is a significant difference messages. between iOS and Android. So Backgrounding well, in iOS well, really means after 10 minutes, the app is gone. And, mm. and so and push and doesn't really work well with, with iOS apps. Lots of apps. Only the Apple apps can stay awake. But, the two but on Android, side side, apps have always been able to kind of right. yeah. receive yeah. Every, the Everything keeps going all the time. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> he says it's going to double a Nexus 9. Wow. Uh, that's good, because that was one of the, the big Nexus, complaints, course, right? No matter how much better well, we Well, the Nexus, I've been happy with the Nexus Android, Android, battery, later, but um, you know, that uh, extended use, so I'm starting to, to see some wear on it. So getting the extended so would be great. Yeah. Mm. In creating a new, uh, USB type -C oh, this is in, oh. And Type-C ushers in a new oh. way of charging that nice. works with oh. hardware. Oh, I would love to. Oh, and everything in between. And it means we're going to start seeing really fast charging of devices. That is a Type-C connector on an Android phone, and I like it. Yeah, me too. Yep. And of course, USB Type-C connectors are flippable and hence much more mobile friendly and durable. No more grappling to find the right direction for the charging plug. Oh my. That's nice. Very, I was hoping this would happen and I, I hope all the manufacturers so adopt this. we've been working with device manufacturers to bring Throw types out of all devices your chargers, to everybody. The yeah, Once, the last time. This is it, you're never gonna, no, that's not Never true. again. Adds the ability to select whether you want I don't know what this means in the EU because of course the EU requires micro USB on all phones. So that's type C. I imagine they're working with the EU. Is this really revolutionary though? I mean, if the kernel supports type C, there are hundreds and the manufacturer puts in a Type C component. It should be supported. I mean, this isn't really well. In the EU, the issue is, of course, 
So for example, proprietary. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and Apple gets around that by offering an adapter with every phone. Type C could be revolutionary because remember, it's more than power. It's uh, it's everything. It's everything. It's a very well, I, I'm, fast. I'm, better I'm a bus. big believer in Type C. I'm just yeah. not a big believer that Android's doing anything really special here to enable. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I would hope the phones would support, you know, USB to ghost type functionality, yeah. video functionality. Yeah. It could make that port really fabulous. Yeah. Most frequently, and make those available with just a single click. And if you weren't a big fan of the volume control changes in Lollipop, hands up. Who uh. Sounds of the lollipop changes. Okay. <laughs> the good news is we simplified those. Second verse, uh, same as easier. the first. And as an example of the little details we polished and obsessed <laughs> over, we've added a drop down to control the volume of individual audio streams. Yeah. Well, that's what people really want. Yes, right? I yeah. want it. Okay. Yeah. It's also the star and the various so, the icons are confusing. Oh, yeah. yeah. But we're excited to be able to share an initial developer preview today with the Nexus 5, 6, 9, and Player. I got And we'd love your feedback on the new features and, and APIs to help good. us get the platform ready for official release in Q3. So that's it. Q3, We're working official incredibly release. incredibly hard to produce our most that's polished soon. Android release to date. We're in just began, beginning Q2 a uh, couple of days, so three months. We also have some really months. exciting new three app developments months. enabled by AMP. For example, with Google Now, which you'll hear about a little bit. You bring later. the volume up a little bit on the And so with that, let me hand over to David Thank to you. give you an update on Android Wear. Thank you. That, that, they, that was some good stuff. They didn't say Milky Way, though, but I think no, Aaron's right they on it. Yeah. They're, they're holding back that. that As round. they did last year. Yeah, yeah, they, they waited for some reason. They've always you think they'd do that up front. Incredible yeah. We're introducing Milky and Way. And from the very beginning, just they've inspired it. artists and engineers to come together and create. And with Android Wear, we're taking a similar path. We're partnering with companies all over the world to create beautiful, useful devices. And the result is choice. Whoop. Earlier this morning, you heard the about a growing set of watches, <laughs> straps, and watch faces. And in fact, there are now over 1,500 watch faces available for Android Wear. And Compared we're to what, by seven all the for ways that you can Apple express your style. Watch. In parallel, and for the past year, we've been making key platform investments to enable truly useful wearable apps. And that's what I want to talk to you about. I told you not to walk there. <laughs> the right right months, out of the light. We've launched four major OS releases. I wonder if there's like a pole you know, the, <laughs> in front of the spotlight. I think as the guy's like, oh, like Users and developers alike. He's a, he's a walker. We got a walker. Like GPS, offline music, and Wi-Fi, we're making your watch more useful for you even when you don't have your phone. New launcher, emoji recognizer. Party watch faces not only enable you to express... Those wrist style, gestures are awesome. Yeah. Provide all sorts the emoji recognizer is kind of silly. You draw the emoji. And and oh, that it like figures it's it out. It's kind of buried, too. I hadn't heard about that one. Yeah, it's on the Airbane. I'll show you. Provide the flexibility you need. All of that's on the Airbane, actually. That you actually wear. And that's perhaps the, the best one. part, every time we make these Stuff. improvements, we're able to push them to existing watches. So when you buy an Android Wear watch, you know it will keep getting better over time. Today, we're evolving Android Wear even further, and we're taking our inspiration from something we already do on our watches, and that's checking the time. Checking the time is pretty cool. You can just look at your wrist <laughs> and place you need and make a decision. That's got to be one of the quotes of the what? whole event. Checking the checking time, the time is pretty cool. cool. Actionable and effortless. And that's at the cornerstone of how we... It is true that uh, the Apple Watch goes dark Wear. no matter what you do if you don't flick it. Our latest it. release of Button. Android Wear, which is rolling out over the next few weeks, brings this approach to even more parts Your, of the uh, experience. My Urbane is always... Display, it has a low power mode, but it's always got time. And it doesn't launcher. hurt the battery. It, mm. Let us show you a few examples. So I can check the time. Pretty right. cool, huh? Yeah. Android Wear watches... Include Can't do that on an old-fashioned watch. Screen, <laughs> meaning you can see the time it, all the time. Always on. There's no need to tap. That's a, a gear watch R, I think. To wake up the display. Or is it a? Yeah, that's a in gear watch. In our latest R. release, we've brought this ability to apps as well, so you can ah. always see useful information at a glance, while also saving on battery. We call this always on apps. So if you're oh, that's shopping, interesting. You can wear your shopping list on oh, your wrist. Oh, nice. I like it. <laughs> Once Jeff has found the tomatoes. 
He can walk all the way to the dairy section. Because he knows what's going on. Ah, that's the that's the that's a big version. Black yeah. and white. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's the same with the uh, watch faces. Black and white mode. Or if you're walking around a new neighborhood, it's particularly valuable on the Urbane, Max which is an OLED. Will stay on the, the LG watches There's are no OLED, and of course, black doesn't use any power at all on OLEDs. Just to get back to the map. That's yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, I've 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 really enjoyed that in the Urbane. It's always just a glance away. The latest release of Android Wear also lets you interact with your watch in new ways that feel natural on your wrist. For example, Jeff can scroll up and down through his notifications. That's using useful if you're holding onto a subway strap or riding a Segway, but it's pretty uh, cool. and it's really where you need your hand free. Not if you're drinking you your coffee in the same hand. Yeah. yeah. The exact location <laughs> 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 the power tools is a bad scenario. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're chatting with a friend, like Jeff is here, using Facebook Messenger, the latest version of Android Wear now lets you draw and send emojis. Yeah, see how buried it is? So you can finally yeah. get to it. He sketches this cocktail glass. The watch recognizes <laughs> okay. it automatically. OK. <laughs> They're applauding that. Well, OK. Uh, it's kind of people love cool. emojis. I mean, I don't know yeah, who will use it. Emojis. I've had it. Again, the Urbane came with all of this. Uh, computer or watch. The kids love the emojis. I've used it once. Android Wear puts all your apps and contacts at your fingertips in the that's, new launch. That's kind of response to Apple, well, isn't it? To the idea of drawing something. Mm -hmm. You can start an app, start communicating with a friend, or ask a question right there. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, wearable apps should be glanceable, actionable, and effortless. Just like checking. So this is just going over what's existing today. Right? This is I don't know which apps currently have the ambient mode or the always on mode. We're seeing lots of Google's great fit does not. From developers. Let me look at Keep. So let's take a look at some of the apps launching in the near future. Foursquare, for instance, uses geofencing and in context notifications to suggest the ideal entree to you. When you walk into a new restaurant, uh, I love Foursquare on my on With my Mode 360. Yeah. 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 Apps like City Mapper. Oh, City Mapper is awesome. It's, it's the Eric Schmidt vision of as long as you're going to need knowing it. when you need pants With and then telling you you're near a pants right. store. Right. request a right. ride from Uber mm -hmm. by saying, "Okay, Google, call a car." Or better yet, you're in the store. Where, where are the pants I was looking for online <laughs> yesterday? Oh, they're right over here. <laughs> we know That's where Tango would be. Yes. Is evolving fast. Those in store maps. devices yep. include everything from accelerometers and heart rate I don't think monitors. There's a haptic motor haptic in my current wear watch. GPS and Wi Fi. And we have enabled apps felt to make buzzes. full use of these capabilities too. Oh, yeah, there's so the ambient Android mode in the uh, crap. In the crap. Oh, yeah. In the keep, <laughs> just like uh, he mentioned. So certain apps have ambient. That's cool. Itself, enabled. Giving you deep interactive experiences on your wrist. Google Fit, for instance, there is a vibrator in the 360. Okay. That sensor data I, just, to I guess I walking, forgot. Running and cycling, as well as squats, <laughs> sit ups, and push ups uh -huh. automatically. You can do it. If golf is more your thing, <laughs> I like Google Fit. Golf Swing Analyzer. Yeah, yeah I've used it more and more. Of course, every watch, Moto and LG, have their own tempo, Fit app. But... And angle of your swing. Yeah, I've stuck to Google Fit as well. Yeah. It's pretty complete. Yeah. If you hear I just started using it recently, and I've been surprised at how good the recognition is. Yeah. Using the watch Although I think it told microphone. my wife she was rowing a boat for Android Wear app. <laughs> 30 <laughs> minutes the other day. I was like, what? If it feels I like it, you come from <laughs> rowing a boat. I, I don't know if total Spotify, accuracy is its biggest selling point for me. It's just always it's just work, It's just always working, and I don't have to think about yeah, it. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. It frankly duplicates almost all the functionality of, of any fitness bands. Yeah. Yeah, Fitbit or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Except for the sleep stuff. And on your way home, You'll be able to adjust your living room temperature with Nest. Honestly, if you can dream it, you can build it. Oh boy! And our developer community—if you build it, really delivering. They will wear it. Today, we're happy to announce that there are already more than 4,000 apps built specifically That's for Android Wear. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at all those. Yeah, that's icons. a good number. I feel like this guy totally put on his developer suit uh, to get on stage today. That's I like hoodie. the hoodie. Got the hoodie. I mean, I can't talk because I've got one on too, but I'm sitting at home and coding today. <laughs> I'm not getting up on stage in front of thousands of developers. <clears throat> Ultimately, Android Wear is about choice. Your choice of powerful developer APIs. Your choice of watches. Your choice of straps and apps. 
together with manufacturers, straps and apps. Chip makers, What's wrong with her developers hand? And What's wrong with her arm? These, That's weird well, Photoshop. Campaign. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a great campaign, but it's super styly model-ish. Like, yeah. I wish yeah. it felt a little bit more real. I mean, I love yeah. the dancing and, like, the models are great, but it's a little to too photoshopped. And build what you want. And with Android Wear, you can. Thank you. There was nothing new in that, though. No, it was all existing stuff. There was stuff. nothing. It was yeah. basically it was what the like, Urbane does. Yeah. And a the timeline went get, to May, right? I wish they'd I mean, say, I wish yeah, they'd say when other watches are going to get 5.1. Right. Yeah, yeah, that was a recap. What's fascinating is that when you take a traditional device like a watch and you add computing and connectivity and a layer of intelligence to it, you end up transforming that experience. Not to mention time-checking ability. Be great if that's you cool. Do that <laughs> you got to admit, more that's devices. cool. Oh, here's the home. More devices, oh, here you go, Aaron. Devices that you run into in your day-to-day -day life. Things like parking meters, washing machines, airport kiosks. If we could get physical devices and connect them in a smart way to the internet, we think we can transform the experience for users. We call this the internet of things. And there are a whole range of possibilities you can imagine. The most common thing that gets talked about is the smarter home. Imagine you're driving in, your garage door, your lighting, your blinds, your music, all working together to create a better home, maybe save energy in the process. But the possibilities go well beyond that. You can imagine a farmer managing the entire farm from her smartphone. The security cameras, the sensors, the irrigation equipment, all of them can be connected so that it works better together. A city's public transportation system Buses, bus schedules, parking spots. You could manage traffic, maintenance, and create a much better experience for people living in the city. So we see a range of I'm thinking Farmville in real life. Endless. It's just a Farmville game there that you're playing. Lot of actually, the tractors are actually Today, moving people are out in the fields, devices, like smart light bulbs, doing what you tell them to do. It's really hard for device manufacturers, just like in early days of smartphones. You don't know exactly how to build your software stack. Developers don't know how to target these experiences. And finally, for users, it is really confusing to make all of this work together. We are fortunate to have Nest. Nest has been working hard at taking traditional devices in the home. Just a and quick reminder that our coverage users. today is brought to you by already done Braintree, braintreepayments.com slash very, very yes, Android Pay. So we have worked Braintree will, in fact, allow you to integrate Android Nest, Pay into Android the your mobile app, along with Apple Pay, PayPal, Bitcoin, Ve Bitcoin Venmo, everything. Cards, of course. Check out the Braintree V.0 SDK at braintreepayments.com slash Android Pay. And for your first $50,000 in transactions, be free. Go to braintreepayments.com slash twit. And finally, for, use, for users, it has to be a simple and elegant experience. So I'm very excited to announce today we are announcing Project Brillo, which is the uh -huh. underlying operating system also for the Internet of Things. Yep. Yep. Project Brillo. Brillo is derived from Android. But we have taken Android and polished it down, hence the name Brillo. We have, this is basically the oh. lower layers of Android. The kernel, <laughs> okay, the so it was named after a steel wool pad. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, <laughs> now we know so why. We polished it down. Was it? I, th I was wondering where that came from. Why Brillo? It doesn't make yeah. any sense. But well, Because it's derived from it's also Android, you get full yeah. operating system support. Things like connectivity, you have Wi-Fi. Really not the best image. No, no, no not at all. And working with Nest, we are adding support for alternative connectivity like... So it is an Android-based OS. Mm -hmm. as well. Which we means it's Linux-based. security from the ground up. And given it's based on Android, you get immediate and it's scale. Cross many, many right? device mm -hmm. manufacturers That's, of course, why use. you would use Android. You want yep. to get... In addition, we as they say, broad silicon device manufacturers support. can manage it from a centralized management console. They can provision these devices. They can update them and so on. So it's an end-to-end -end functioning operating system. The next step is what we call as Weave. Weave is the communication That's weave, layer w -E -A -V. by which the Internet of Things can actually talk to each other. You need a common language, a shared understanding, so that devices can not only talk to each other and to the cloud. And is this at the Zigbee Z-Wave so level? That's what I'm wondering. What we're doing is we have standardized no. schemas 
schemas and nothing but a semantic like blueprint yeah. for yeah. all these devices to have a it's common a communications language. protocol. Yeah. For example, so it is. It's C wave. Camera simply. can define what does it mean to say take a picture, and all devices around it can understand that. Mm. A door mm. lock can define lock and unlock as two phrases which all other devices in that ecosystem can understand oh, and work with each other. So we're, we we're putting together something schemas, similar to this in our makerspace right now with door lock, automatic door locks, power systems that don't turn on if you haven't been trained on that device, things like that. that this would be fantastic because <laughs> I'm going through the code right now and it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. Available cross platform. So you can use this is a modular approach. You can have Brillo and Weave together or you can run Weave on top of your existing stack. Ah. And very, the powerful thing is Weave exposes developer APIs in a cross platform way. So if you're writing a recipe application on your smartphone, the actual application can now turn on your smart oven, set it to the right temperature, right? And any connected device, your oven can be voice enabled easily because we provide voice APIs as part of this. Wow. The final thing <laughs> we are doing is getting the user, user interface right. So because this is built into Android, any Android device will recognize another device based on Brillo or Weave Mm. And as a user, you get the same standardized setup for any mm. connected device. Nice. You open up so, your phone, we detect it, you choose the device, cool. and set up the right owners, and you're good. So to is this a mesh network? I would guess with the name Weave, it must yeah, be. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. That is really Wi -Fi, cool. Wi-Fi. This is the beginning, based, of, beginning of the journey. Based, Just like both. we've done Android for smartphones, we are doing this for the entire ecosystem together. Brillo goes into developer preview in Q3 of this year. And we, we are going to announce documentation throughout the year, and we are working with developers, and the full stack will be ready to go by Q4 of 2015. Oh, wow. And so we are very excited that for the first time, we are bringing a comprehensive end-to-end -end solution. I've always thought that one of the big players should be the one that announces a standard, open standard that others can adhere to. Yep. No licensing, You've no cost, well-supported, and this sounds like that's what this is. Mm -hmm. That's really what IoT has been missing, has been a, exactly. a standard, you know, yep. base that everyone can work off of. So. Connected devices and how the phone is at the Google's in a position to do that. Facility. It sounds promising. Frankly, only Google. Apple's going to do a proprietary solution. Yep. Yep. Talk about Facebook, how we Microsoft, just, they're all going to be proprietary. Yeah. Yeah. Google doesn't really have necessarily that, a preferred hardware platform, so it makes sense for them to do this, you know? Let everybody develop to it, just like they've done with Android Wear. Organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And we've been doing that for a while. Think about how far searches evolved from the 10 blue links. If you're in a modern mobile phone, you know, you can ask That's probably question, Google like, internal jargon, the 10 blue links, like? the original search interface. And you get the answer instantly on your smartphone for your Muppets fans out there. In fact, you can even ask, what does Kermit the Frog, how do you say Kermit the Frog in Spanish? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, that, good. That was yeah. nice. It ignored oh, that yeah. first clause. <laughs> no. Kermit la rana. This, query, what this is like canned. Simple yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's actually a good thing he said the right thing eventually. eventually. You know, yeah. He corrected himself. He saw it on the slide. Right, <laughs> right. That would have given it away. And making it all work. In he did anyway. The reason we are able to do all of this is thanks to the investments we have made in machine learning. Machine learning is what helps us answer the question, what does the tree frog look like from millions of images around the world? The, you know, the computers can go through a lot of data and understand. It's interesting. Even Flickr can do this. This is not is as, I guess, as hard as it used to be. We are able to do that so much well better in the last now. few years. It's thanks to an advanced Brillo is a Spanish word that means learning. shine, I'm told. Thank Deep you, Gender Q. are a hierarchical layered hmm. learning system. So we learn in layers. So it isn't a trademark. The first it's a... layer can understand lines and edges and shadows and shapes. A second layer may understand things like ears, legs, hands, and so on. And the final layer understands the entire image. We have the best investment in machine learning over the past many years, and we believe we have the best capability in the world. Our current deep neural nets are over 30 layers deep. It is what helps us when you speak to Google, our word error rate has dropped from 23% to 8% in just over a year. And that progress wow. is due to our investment in machine learning. Yeah, I, I've been using OK Google a lot, and I haven't it seen many errors recently at all. It is type queries like sunsets and lightning 
we return the exact very very frightening uses instantly this insight is what we Sorry. will use to help organize users I'm confusing music nerds and, geek and uh, tech geeks as a next step <laughs> Thank you. we want to take all the pronounced brillo and brillo. in the context of mobile, brillo brillo a whole lot more assistive to users we want to give users this information even before they know they need it. We want to give it to them in context. If you take a product like Google Inbox, and you're planning a trip to London, we bring together all the information in one place, and it is waiting, ready to go for you. That's Anybody use Inbox? To do with I do. London you you do? Really? Google it's now. great. Oh, I actually I use like it on the desktop. Leave. Really? That's how, that's how much I'm invested in it. I yeah. used it a few times and I gave up. It or didn't work for me. If you reach the airport, well, I was already using Google's automatic categorization in Gmail. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a natural to work extension of that. In mobile, the need is even greater. You're deluged with a lot of information on your phones. Even a simple use case, like if someone pings me and says, can we meet at the restaurant I emailed you about? I need to open my email, search for it, Figure out a way to book that all while I'm on the go. Small use case, but every Feld in our chat room is pointing out they need a snappy name. We are working hard you've got Cortana, you've got Siri, you've got Alexa. To talk Google about Now, is that, that what we call it? You need a name. Yeah. From the Google now you need to personify it. I don't think anyone's ever texted me, do you want to go to the restaurant I emailed you about? <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Your smartphone ought to be smart. Here we go, Google Now. Why can't it tell you where you parked your car? Why can't it remind you to pick up the milk that your spouse texted you about? And in fact, why can't it figure out that you're flying to New York in two months I think and you should call your college roommate and you Despite the creepy you line and, and privacy concerns, everybody I know wants Google Now to do more. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. are the kind of crazy questions. Certainly I do. Got us started on Google Now. As Sundar talked about, we're working hard to figure out how we can assist users in a mobile world. Since we first launched, we brought more and more useful information to you. The last train home in Tokyo. A new open house in your neighborhood. I haven't seen that one and yet. Yes, even a reminder for where you parked your car. That I do. Yeah, I, I get that. I love. Yeah. yeah. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the progress we've made and what's coming next. So look. To assist you, we need to be able to do three things really well. Read your email. One, oh. <laughs> understand your context. Read, Read your, your email. email. <laughs> <laughs> and three, help you take action. Get stuff done. So let's talk about the first thing. Context. context. Now, context has multiple dimensions. Where you are, what you're doing, okay, location. and what you care about. Email. And in a different context, you need different things. Say you're at Disneyland, the information that you need, how long are the lines, what are the most popular rides, how do you deal with a six-year-old on a sugar rush, how do you deal with it? It's very different from, say, you're vegging out on a lazy Sunday. Some actual humor, that's good. But you know, context <laughs> I'm is sorry, also I missed it. about what? getting what you're saying. <laughs> so how do you deal with when this six-year-old on a sugar <laughs> high? <laughs> How long does it take to get I'm guessing there? she has a six-year-old. Yeah. When does my flight leave? And we've made some great progress here. We have built up a natural language understanding engine, like Sundar talked about. But we've also built up this powerful context engine. And we understand more than 100 million places. Not just their physical layout and geometry, but also interesting things like when are they busy, when are they open, and what are you likely to need when you're there? Once we understand context, we then want to proactively bring I you. Use that all the time in Google Maps, by the way. You're on your way to the airport. I want to know when somebody's open. Mm. I used to go to the store website so and try to find the search. Much easier. You search for the when is this store open? Yeah. Oh, I just pull up Google route. Maps all yeah. the time. I don't even need to know how to get there. I just want to know when they're open. We'll get you the is this store, restaurant we'll open today? Schedule, Google we'll get Maps. You news. So how do we do this? This is where Google's knowledge graph comes in pretty handy. So the knowledge graph is Google's understanding. I'm hearing Google Larry David here. And all That's the things in it. Pretty handy. Entities. <laughs> things like baseball teams, gas stations, TV shows, cocktail recipes, the works. So this can power a lot of useful answers for you. We talked about context. We talked about answers. The third thing we want to be able to do, if you want to assist you, is help you take action. 
get stuff done. And you know, in a mobile world, you get stuff done with apps. Play music, order a cab, buy groceries. So we just started a pilot program with over 100 partners where we proactively surface actions and information from apps in Google Now. So when you land at the airport, you can order an Uber or a Lyft. Well, this is another thing that's already been announced. You, yeah, you this, is, this is live now. Like, yeah, this isn't oh, new. This is my favorite. You can reorder groceries cool. instantly with a Now card. from. Instagram. I feel like maybe she's laying the groundwork and going to hit us with something new. You're talking about this is the application integration that Google announced. Yeah, yeah. These, are the, these are the enhanced cards to other but, but applications. But it was in beta, and it wasn't everybody who saw it. So I, it's lots of time on still something. Pi yeah, pilot with 100 partners. Dash. Right. And we yeah. asked ourselves, how can we get you quick answers to quick questions without leaving context? How can we help you get things done you're watching live coverage of Google's I.O. keynote for 2015, brought to you by Braintree Payments. We thank them for their support. The Braintreepayments.com slash right twit to add Android Pay Wherever to the list of payments you can board. accept in your mobile app. Android Pay, PayPal, pay, Apple Pay, now Bitcoin, tap. Venmo, credit cards, and more. Braintreepayments.com slash twit. And to find out more about the Android Pay platform, Braintreepayments.com slash Android Pay. So now on tap, as Dave mentioned, tap. takes advantage of new functionality in the Android now app release. On It'll be rolling tap. out in M. And I want to give you a M. quick preview of what it looks like, what it can do for you when you turn the feature on. So I have Neil up here with me. Hot off the press demo. So you want to see it in action? Yes? All right. Let's do it. Live demo, so live demo time. Live right. demo. Wasn't he in One Next? Direction, that guy? And you wonder, like me, <laughs> Doing the what demo? is his real no? name? I don't know. Oh. Okay, Google. Sorry, I'm not that much of What's a What's his real player. name? What's his real name? Skrillex's full name is Sonny John Moore. Wow. Who knew? So it knew you wow. were listening to Skrillex, who is oh, okay. apparently now in-house at Google. A quick question <laughs> without having to switch context. Oh, so notice, in also, context voice actions. His real name. Oh. Now, yep. it's obviously it you know, and me. It knows who what you're listening to. to. They, they previewed this last year a little bit, right? Uh, I think she used the example, uh, you know, take me home or, or I want to go home or something, and it figured out where home is. Where home was. So they're just really building on this, which is great. Well, they've, you know, maybe two years ago showed search, subsequent searches, knowing what your premiere prior search was. I don't know much about the movie. I want to find out more. So all I have to do is a simple tap and hold on the home button. Oh, Google no. Oh, that's okay. cool. Now okay. tell me Google doesn't read your email. <laughs> there we go. Well, that's at least they're being more cool. obvious about it. Yeah, right. it's in and the it's email app. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're talking about Tomorrowland. I, I heard that. And it's anticipating what your next action would be. It's like, what is the movie? I want to look at the trailer. I want to go buy tickets. You know, like, that's really cool. Actors, actresses, etc. Now... Reviews. So this puts now in know, okay. everywhere, right? Puts it kind of inter integrates now into your apps. Have George yeah. Clooney, so I'm going to watch Instead it. Instead of exiting anyway. an app to do now, you're there. But you know, you can easily watch the trailer on YouTube. You can check out the cast list on IMDb or the Rotten Tomato score on. That's Flix. the more uh, below that. I yeah. want to show you another example. I presume you'd be able to do that in take chat. Take action in the moment with now on tap. Yeah, so I'm anticipating time, the privacy hawks. Viber jumping all over this yeah. in the blogs. So by the way, now on tap works Today in a variety tomorrow. of apps. It does work the in app the app itself chat. doesn't have to make any modifications. It's pretty nice. Oh. Um, so in this oh, case, so this is not Hangouts. Uh, no. And the app doesn't have oh, to know about it because Google's reading so everything right. on the screen. Yeah, they're monitoring it. Wow. With a that is a little much. On the home button, you get help. That's so, cool. So they're saying that app is Viber. Which is a direct competitor to Google Hangouts. But I want to point out a couple Google. things going on here. Oh. So first, just like the movie, you saw nice information, instant Kudos information. Kudos to Google for using non-Google apps yeah. as part of their demos. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's what makes cool. sense, though. I feel like I should say yeah, this is okay with me, though. Like, this is a little weird. Google, I gave Google permission to look at my Google stuff, right? But oh, maybe not my WhatsApp or my... Happy. Right. I don't know. But yeah, I wonder how people are going to react to that. Yeah. It's very convenient. Yeah, if it's enhancing your experience, if it's helping you use the apps better, Better, then you know, I, think, why not? I think they're depending on the fact that people will just kind of intuitively say, oh, I'm reading it, so my phone knows about it. Let's look at what As opposed to the here. fact of it, which is so that Google must now be looking at all the, con the content of now. your hey, In every apps. screen, yeah. Right. Not just screens, right? It would have to. 
Mm-hmm. This must be an option though, or a feature. Right? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, you turn, can turn this off. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully by application. Yeah. But as you might I want to use it for Gmail. I don't want to use it for answers, whatever. It's also apps. So what does it mean for developers? Yep. This is a new way that you can reach and re-engage with users when you're relevant to users in the moment. But this Once would not be permission apps Google. based. Uh, uh, permissions so in the app users, because tap on open table, so the app doesn't have to know about in. it. This would have to be a system level notice, permission. We took you yeah. right to the specific this has got to be a setting in Google now. Yeah. And yeah. Enable yes. on tap. Or uh, and I want to yeah. show you a quick, subtle, but cool thing while we're here. So let's switch to the menu. Oh, she's looking at open table and now. That second dish there sounds good. But what is it? Kind of hard to pronounce for me. and um, But I want to see how it looks like. Okay, Google. Show me pictures of Spineco Tiropita. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wait a minute. Who was that? Wait a minute. Who was that? That was, that was the, 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 that was the One Direction uh, kid yeah. doing the demo. We also had pro- trouble pronouncing oh. it clearly. Okay. But so if I can't pronounce it, I can't <laughs> ask yeah. about it. Google what now was able to recognize it. What if you mispronounce it? I would now probably bring mispronounce in it. an interpreter to pronounce it. Not just yeah. Apps, though. It looks now good, though. you in the moment, even when you're on the web. So for this last I pronounce example, it. let's Span switch to Chrome. Up, but okay. That, I do too. I do too. That's yeah. Okay. Weird. Here's an article about Hugh Laurie heading to Weep. Oh, yeah. He's my good My favorite Veep. TV show. I know a lot about Weep, way more than I should really, but not a lot about Hugh. We all get a, so one yes, member of I One can, Direction to, to keep us company. Your, your choice. Back at the keyboard, <laughs> I'll take Harry. I can tap on Hugh, and I get information about Hugh. tap on Hugh? Pretty cool. Wait a minute. Wait, she tapped on the uh, she tapped on she Hugh? Tapped on the image or the no, she words? tapped on the name, the, the, the text in the article. The text. Okay. Google reads everything. But the nice thing here is that you could get information instantly. Spani. In all Kupita. these examples, in the article from our uh, Greek the audience music member, you're listening to, Mark Kunalis. The message you're replying to. Spani. The key is hmm. understanding the context. Ooh, of the oh, Jason, you're you're Greek. He Once proves. Spenny now Kupita. has that understanding, it's able to get you quick answers to quick questions. I always say help you get things cool. done wherever you are on the phone. And for developers, like we said, it's a new way for you to reach and re-engage with users. Spenny we share a lot cool. more details Spenny over Kupita. the next few months. That's, what, that's the way I always say it. Yeah. Quick preview of that's how I say it. Yeah, so we're Android right. Because I love it. Give me more. No pixels visible in the audience. When it comes to mobile, there's another key area where users need a lot of assistance managing a lot of information. This looks great. I can't wait to yeah. get that. That's uh, going to be part of Android M. To tell you about how we are applying machine learning and intelligence Google. to that critical area. Now on area. tap. I'm going to hand it off to Anil. Thank you. So that's the Google Now portion of our uh, presentation. You're watching live coverage of the Google I.O. keynote. Not now we talk about the new photos My eldest app. daughter, Ava, what? graduated from preschool. This was predicted. Yeah. It was a pretty fun day. Yeah, this was the most wanted to capture the complete moment. leak from so my uh, wife took yep. some photos. 312, to be exact. I only took 237 photos and 56 videos. Do the math. Sundar mentioned the information challenge we have on mobile. And I'm sure all of us can relate. I mean... How incredible is it that we all have a camera in our pockets everywhere we go, ready to capture any moment? Mm -hmm. Think about the moments in your life and the photos and videos you've taken. The big moments. The small moments. The thing, that, of course, that was controversial about this is this is apparently a mobile app that is being extracted from Google Plus. Featuring the Google Plus capabilities. The The question is whether it will remain in Google Plus. Would make it easier to relive the moments. Google does a great job, I think, with photos. Absolutely. Their acquisition the of Nick's software has given them has some really powerful stuff. Snapseed and Nick How often app is great. Time and I love Google Plus for photos. Scrolling, scrolling. Remember they also bought Picasa, mm-hmm. uh, created Picasa web one photo that we online photo sharing what site, if we could use Google's which was replaced by Google Plus. To help people take back control of their digital lives. And that's why I'm thrilled to be here to introduce a brand new product, Google Photos. There you go. 
And by the way, that's the icon used currently for the Google yeah. Now I was going to say, that's the current icon. I've got an Apple yeah. photos yeah. on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> new experience. Right now, but it's a, pulling a it link to your Plus. gallery in Google+. Plus. Right. Three big ideas. First, a home for all your photos and videos. A private and safe place to keep a lifetime of memories. Available from any device. Fast, intuitive, and beautiful. Second, in fact, if you launch that app, you go, you get the Google Plus menu as part of the app. You're essentially in, in Google Plus. It's a, yeah. it's a link to the photos page of Google Plus. Exactly. That's obviously going to change. And they said from any device. That means there's going to be a separate photos app for your PC. Sharing should be simple and reliable. Or iOS. Or iOS. Or iOS. That's, a, that's yeah. a big question. Yeah. It's easy to hold on to the photos and videos you care about. Photos.google.com is currently saying something's developing. Stay tuned, but that will be the URL. Mm. home. Get it developing. Mm. I'd like to introduce <laughs> David Lead, our product mastermind, who's going to be helping me with the demo today. Oh, so what band's he in, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's start, uh, he's a Hosier member. Say, this is a pretty cool moment. And as Maybe you Mumford and I and <laughs> all know, the only way to do a moment like this, true justice, is to take a selfie. Oh, bring out the oh. selfie stick. Selfie stick. Selfie stick. No, oh, they're doing it the old-fashioned way. I'm doing the old-fashioned way. All right. I see arm. I now see that we arm. Have that out of the way. Let's open up. Pump the up new that volume Google on the keynote, app. if you would, Jason. You can see the photo we just took is at the top, and it's already been safely backed up. Same interface. So Google far. Photos automatically backs up from your phone, tablet, computer, and even your camera memory cards. We can also sync all your photos and videos with Google Drive. Now remember, here Dave has my phone, and we're looking at my account. These are all my personal photos and videos, so you're about to learn a whole lot about me. So what does a lifetime of photos and videos look like? Well, in Google Photos, it's everything in one place. It looks the same, no right? Yeah, so far nothing are. really yeah. different. I can easily jump to any moment in time, all the way back to my earliest photos. I can view my memories across days, but with a simple pinch Ah, that's nice. Months, that's good. That's and nice. Again, across kind of apple -y. Okay. That's nice. Very nice. My wife will like that. She's Let's always sc scrolling, 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 scrolling to yeah. find a picture. Back to when I took that road trip across Canada. Again, using a very simple pinch gesture, I can go all the way back in. Yeah, so back this is, this is basically a functionality in the hair. iPhone. Look how smooth today. that is, too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wonder Every if it's going to be this smooth in reality. Fast. I mean, I'm assuming all these photos are this is a live demo fact, from the guy that's running the, yeah. the demo. Because you can see the, the uh, That means the they're, they're Let's flick out of this photo. sizing the image to match to the, right the screen and brings up my collections. making it he small. Just that's what Apple's doing as well. He just said none of these photos are local. They're all in the cloud. Yeah. So there's a thumbnail on this. A home for all your memories, big and small. I do wonder what like phone he's using. Let's talk about idea number two. Google Photos helps you organize and bring your moments to life. We want to take the work out of photos. Using machine learning, Google Photos understands what's important. Google does this very well, I think, already. Organizing your memories. I love that, the Google Here, Plus, the I'm stories yeah. that they put together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, stories are great. Photos, the introduction of David Hasselhoff into select photos. And things <laughs> that matter the most it's obviously got a lot of power. Life. Ah, interesting. So oh, categorization people, here. I like that. People, places, and things. Yeah. That's actually better than I what Flickr is doing, which is saying, you know, here's a picture, here's all your pictures of walls. Right. This They're very granular. Is this, is, private, this is good. And it's for my eyes only. I have to emphasize Let's that. Let's tap on my face. Notice that the selfie <laughs> oh, we just face took recognition. is already in. in here, instantly grouped with all the other photos. So that wasn't from tagging. That was... Dave, face recognition. This is very Picasso-like. Picasso yeah. had this yeah. people, did this it? face recognition. Yeah, yeah. yeah it did. And as you can see, we make it easy to share with any of your favorite services. This is going to make an epic first tweet from our new Google Photos Twitter handle. All right. <laughs> Let's have a look at all the photos Truly epic. of my epic. That was epic. <laughs> epic, dude. The recent ones are at the top. And I can go back to when she was four years old as a flower oh. girl at oh. my wedding. So Aww. that's it's auto categorized his daughter. I get, I gather. All the way back. That's nice. So she was since she was an infant. Yeah, mm -hmm. was I envy parents today because they, you know, Aww. you're in luck, Etta. You'll have a, such a good documentation of Etta's life. 
compared to my kids, where I really didn't. Yeah, and I won't be able to find one good photo because they're all <laughs> 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 blurry ones for the one good one. I remember being caught in a really bad snowstorm about 10 years ago back home. Normally, it would take me forever Look at to find these photos. Places. Instead, I just tap. So I wonder if you can fix the. I mean, if it mistakes. No storm in Toronto. Wait a minute. One face for another. Can you fix it? Oh, like M G. Did you see what he just did? Snowstorm in Toronto. Okay. Yep. He, uh, uh, presuming again, he, he didn't that's tag context. it. That that's. It knew that the it, photos it, were it in knew Toronto. It knew there's snow there. and these are from yeah. Toronto. Right. Yeah. Now that I found this memory, oh, let's boy. talk about yeah, how very. these photos helps bring these memories to life. I can easily tap the pencil which will let me make adjustments tuned to the photo's color, lighting, and subject. Or Let's see if they use a Snapseed interface tapping on the plus button, Google Photos lets me create collages, animations. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. okay. oh that's and, nice. And now you can create your own stories. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I've been wanting that for a while. Uh, that, that's where they put all the women. Yep. I was going to say, they, they yes. obviously put them all in the same row. <laughs> that's the woman section. A swipe <laughs> oh, my God. Brings up my photos. <laughs> here, I will get suggestions for new creations made from my photos. You'll sit over here if you don't I can mind. preview and either choose to save, edit, that's a big -ass or throw chair. away. The choice is mine. Oh, my God. There's a juggler in that chair. Now, I think <laughs> I have a video up here that I recently got after uploading all the GoPro footage some friends and I took auto created from your fight. photos and videos. Let's watch. This is a little bit different than story. This is more like Animoto or the um, HTC's mm -hmm. uh, Sense videos. Mm -hmm. Adds music, it montages. Would take me hours to do this myself, but Google Photos did all the hard work. If I want to make edits, it's easy to change yeah. the theme, soundtrack, yeah, and this even is, reorder. This is what HTC was clips. doing. Yep. Like this one here of me wiping out. Mm. Don't. I just might take that one out before I share. You got to keep that keynote volume at a much higher level. Three. We want I mean, when we talk, obviously not. But. Share and save what matters. Think of it as sharing how you want with who you want, no strings attached. For months, Dave's been asking me to share with him the photos we took from the Giants game we went to last year. So first, I'm just going to tap on that blue search button, and we're going to find the photos from the baseball game. Is it going to say Giants or baseball? Baseball. Be cool if it knew what you can see. I took some yeah. good shots, but I never got around to sharing. I have those. So let's too. select them all. Now, rather than having to do this tediously one by one by one, we've introduced a new gesture. Oh yeah, this was rumored as well. Make multi-photo selection really fast. I just press and hold on Looking one of the drag. photos and drag my finger. Oh yeah. To select them all. Cool. Oh baby. Yeah, that's nice. And the guy with glass. <laughs> so now we know of two. That, I think Next, that's that's that was a different button. guy. Ooh, ooh two guys with two guys. guys. Share photos and videos any way you want. Now, earlier you saw me share to Twitter, but we also wanted. Jason's not wearing his glasses. Making sharing predictable I doubt it. and reliable. <laughs> nor, nor his mic. So in this case, I'm simply going to tap get a link, and in less than a second, I have a link to all 25 items. Now, the beauty of this is I don't have to worry about wow. whether the recipient of the link wow. Easy has a sharing. particular app or has a login. I can share it. Anyway, that's that why you that's take great. it out of Google so Plus. Yes, yes. So you don't need the Google Plus. Plus very login. frustrating because yep. in the past you've had to share it on Google Plus. What Dave yep. sees when he clicks on that link. And remember, oh, this is great. sharing with no strings attached. That's this great. Is the high quality content without needing to log in that was easy. or download any app. Yeah. Nice. All right. That's very cool. Yeah, very nice. Now, in this case, because Dave is logged in, he has an extra button, and that lets him copy all of these photos and videos to his Google Photos Ooh, library. My goodness, look at that! Instantly. Mm. That's cool. That's nice. That's, cool. That's really nice. This lets you hold on to the memories that matter, even when you weren't the one holding the camera. So there you have it: Google Photos, a home for all your photos and videos, organized and brought to life, so that you can share and save what matters. Now, when we say a home for all your photos and videos, we want everyone to be able to safely back up and store a lifetime of memories. And that's why we're also announcing with Google Photos, you can now unlimited. back up and store yep. unlimited okay. high quality photos and videos for free. Oh, boy. Wow.
That, uh, uh, that upped the ante a little bit. That's a game changer. All right, so the terabyte, terabyte from Flickr. Yeah. Although I have to point out, a terabyte is virtually unlimited. I mean, it is. Uh, I haven't filled up my terabyte. I upload all my photos to Flickr. For photos and 1080p high definition for videos. 16 megapixels, that's good. That is good. It's not raw, and it's not, you know, full quality for... Near identical uh, visual for the majority of people. I mean, but for most... I mean, it's camera phone stuff, right? Yeah. Here Average today, user isn't shooting raw. Up to right. Google Photos for free. There are very few people do raw. Smug Let's take a closer look of And you pay for the storage. Mm -hmm. not, the They're still around? Wow. The feathers, yeah, I love water them. Droplets, <laughs> the However, I think it's got to be tough in the face of this. you will have peace of mind that your memories are safe. So, I mean, I wonder what happens to my Google storage that I paid for. I mean, quality resolution. Now you might well, be you asking, use that for other things other than photos. Hands, yeah, but Google photos is probably 95% of Hold on, when's it available? I'm using it for. Is today. It's available today. Wow. I'm going to get it right now. Oh, did you see iOS? Today. Yeah. iOS? Yeah. Oh, wow. that's a shot across Apple's bow. Yeah. Apple Google charges for that storage. Starting later today on Android, iOS, and web. And web. Uh, oh, good. Well, there's no reason to pay for iCloud now. now. I just yeah. You how Google yeah, Photos that's is making it easier on mobile. Economically, to that's a huge. Manage the most important moments in your life. And Aparna showed you how Google Now is helping people get the information they need on mobile. Let's now take a look at how the Google Translate mobile app is connecting people across languages. Remember, Skype now has translation More as Microsoft's product built in. I translated every day. But I have to say, Google Translate is pretty amazing. Thank you very much for your help. What's about food? It's pretty cool. <laughs> Translates uh, menus and signs. Friendship. Yeah, that, that visual translate is amazing. Yeah. Yep. About belief. Something they acquired. About fear. Oh. I love how it preserves the font on signs. Yeah. Yes, yes, and the color. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Divide. But every day, the most translated words in the world I love you. Are how are you? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, never mind. Nice try. I tried. And I love you. Okay. Oh, say, yeah, say, you say, you're right. Milky Aww. Way. How are you and I love you? That's nice. And I am I lost. lost. <laughs> That's Dr. Mom, you're right. Where the Please hell help. am I? Dr. Mom in the chat room nailed it. Donde es las baños? Where's the bathroom? Hi. I'm Jen, and I'm here to talk to you today Hi, about, Jen. We, about, we, about what we at Google are doing to help the next billion people come online and have a great experience doing it. You're watching live coverage of Google I.O. from Google San Francisco. Leo Laporte with Aaron Newcomb, Ron Richards, and Gina Trapani. All over the world. Making the world's information accessible. Brought to you by Braintree Payments. Everywhere. Now so incorporating Android Pay. Right That's there. awesome. Boy, they, they jumped on that one. That's why we're so excited about this powerful shift taking place right now. And more at BraintreePayments.com slash Android Pay. And for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, this is for you mobile developers, BraintreePayments.com slash Twit. It will have a profound impact on mobile computing, both as users and as creators. And so we're thinking very carefully about how we evolve both our products and our platforms to address their particular needs. Put yourself in the shoes of someone coming online for the first time on a smartphone today. He didn't mention whether they're extracting the those features from Google out Plus there on the web mm -hmm. in an app. They're going to downplay that you if that's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. And connect to the people. The Why not leave it in? What's but the cost? But life in Sao Paulo is very different. Just from another life place in you can get to it. And each country brings its own unique challenges and opportunities. The bulk of new smartphone growth over the next several years is happening in just a handful of key countries. In fact. In the next two years, we expect to see 1.2 billion smartphones sold across just the six sold. countries you see here. And just in case it's not clear, this is a huge opportunity this is, uh, for you know, Android developers. Indra, India, Indonesia, Nigeria, these, these countries uh, are, Android devices. are very low penetration for smartphones. The vast majority of the next billion will be Android users. We're excited about what we're already seeing from the community of Android developers. Let me give you a taste of how we're working at Google to bring people online and to give them a great experience once they get there. First, we want to remove barriers to smartphone adoption. People so buying I devices just paid for the first three years time in these markets too Pro. often encounter low-quality hardware or out-of-date <laughs> software. 
Never pay for three years of anything in technology. In mm. That's You'll my advice. You'll see a huge display of phones on sale. But not all of them are able to run the latest and greatest apps. The awful Our phone Android buying experience. It's all yeah. about enabling high quality and up-to-date smartphones at a great value. Android One is their low end. They should just send one to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Send one, right. Partners ...to make it possible to create these better devices. Last year, we introduced Android One in India with phones from three OEM partners. Now, Android One devices are available in seven countries, including India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, the Philippines, and as of just a few weeks ago, Turkey. <laughs> All of this Give it up is for done Turkey. through collaborations with more than you know, 10 OEMs. And I don't many think other Turkey would welcome partners. being seen as a developing yeah, nation. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. We're also building support for features that are particularly useful in these emerging markets. Like dual SIM cards, I don't know how Flickr responds to this. I think Smug Mug and the Pro solutions are safe. Mm -hmm. And of course, PX, Android One but phones I run the don't know how Flickr responds to this. Of Android, and are among the very first to receive new versions of Android. Our hope is that Android One will continue to spur innovation across the ecosystem, so that all phones. Well, like I said, I still use Flickr, but I use it as a secondary backup, right? right? I mean, I, just in case something happens, right? right? I've got all my photos in Flickr. I've got I do the all same thing with the Microsoft OneDrive. Yeah, there you go. Storage yeah. there. It's not bad to have it in two spots. It's not. Especially when they're your family photos you don't want to lose. And it's relatively cheap to protect those by using another service. I have not logged into Flickr in years. <laughs> well, Flickr is a terabyte free. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you have a uh, Microsoft Office subscription, it's an unlimited storage for free. Uh, the one who really hurts here, the couple are Dropbox and Apple, yeah. who are still charging a lot for cloud storage. Yep. Being lit up every single school day. In addition to our platforms, we're also focused on making sure our core Google apps are fast, useful, and relevant, no matter where you are in the world. We know having access to the full range of information on the internet can have a transformative impact on people's lives. Oh, is this the bandwidth metering thing they're doing? Man, Man this is just a lot of lead up. Yeah. A potato yeah. farmer in Kenya whose crops were dying. Get to it, Jen. We're ready. <laughs> the books he had didn't give him any help. So we went to a cyber cafe. This is the equivalent of a, a kind of a public a service website. announcement. Mm -hmm. This is see the yeah. good we're doing. Yep. We're not seeing this as a lucrative market of a billion consumers who don't have phones yet. We're seeing it as helping. Right, right. We're connecting the world. Right. We're making the world a better place. Remember, she's also talking to developers, and this is an important yes. message for developers. Yeah. Uh, we'll get you everywhere. Even with access to the Internet, though, for many users in these fastest-growing countries, connectivity can be a real challenge. In some cases, data is just of course, too expensive to make it. this is what Facebook yeah. is trying to solve with internet.org. Google right. has its own Loon project. And even if you do have access to a good internet connection, data transfer is still too often intermittent or slow. This is the this subsidizing is of data, data costs in emerging nations. A medium-sized web page or a map, and even longer to buffer Facebook a getting a lot of heat for so its kind of mind, private version of the internet on internet.org. We're them in ways that work far better in a world where speed, size, and connectivity are central concerns. Let's start with Search and Chrome, two of our mm. foundational products that facilitate people's first experience back and of the internet. Tell you how great we are. We saw in Indonesia that loading a search results page was often taking as long as eight and a half seconds on a 2G connection. So last October, we launched a streamlined version of our search results page. It was 10 times smaller. With 10 blue links. Faster. <laughs> Whoa. Since then, you see how much faster that was? Yeah. This light search results yeah. page to 13 other countries where users are often on slow connections. Well, they took now, out the, the images, right? Page loads, and the buttons. users should be able to click on a result and load the web page quickly. But on 2G, we saw that clicking on a result could often take an average of 25 seconds and use up to a megabyte of data, which can be very expensive. We're now optimizing the resulting web pages for users on slow connections, starting in Indonesia. Google has announced that Inbox is now uh, open to all. Hmm. This is not at the event, but uh, they did that. And most importantly, make it easier for users uh, to find the information apps they want users? <laughs> right when they want it. No, it's one not. of the reasons yeah, I, right. I didn't use it. Right. Yeah, yeah, me too. Inbox will be open to all. You don't need an invite. It will also open up Inbox to all Google for Works customers. Oh. Yes. As long as your Finally. admins enable this feature and since over through the early adopter program starting today. Finally. That's 
They're also adding some features. If you're a frequent traveler, you'll look. This is from Google Senior Product Manager for Inbox, Shalini Agarwal, who's working overtime. Trip bundles feature will automatically organize emails for a trip into into one bundle for upcoming trips. So in addition to, you know, you have social and updates, forums, you now will have trips. Right. Extremely handy. Because you make your reservations months in advance sometimes. Yeah. It's great to have that. Reminders will sync between Google <laughs> Keep and Inbox. It's good. Keep is good, but it's not very functional, and adding functionality like that is great. Yeah. You'll also, developers will be uh, able to embed deep links into native apps, into the emails. This is what we saw with the clicking and sending to Twitter. It's a special email markup. They call it highlights. This means that you'll be able to save any The ability to recall any email within the first 10 seconds after you hit send. Email undo. Later. Offline. All that means is they don't send it for 10 right. seconds. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They're finally adding signatures to Inbox. That was one of the things that they missed. YouTube is extremely popular um, around the world, especially in these growing markets. Well, they said Google for work. They didn't necessarily say Google apps. Though. They didn't. They said Google for that's, work. That's Google for work. Yeah. Google, Google yeah. yeah. So that I still in really Indonesia, can't use for it. Example, YouTube it's good news. Uh, Inbox getting some big features and no longer invite only. On how to style yeah. hijab scarves. YouTube videos can require a lot of bandwidth. So we just recently launched something called YouTube Offline in India, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. This lets you take a video offline for up to 48 hours and watch it, whether or not you've got an internet connection. We're continuing to look at ways to help video content become accessible to our growing base of YouTube mobile users around the world. Maps is another area where we're really investing in creating a better experience for the next billion users. Any new features, Jim? We hear Jen? wonderful stories about Anything how maps new? help people in their it's daily lightweight. lives. It's just lightweight. Like the story of two sisters. This whole thing has been about. His business was in a favela and was impossible to find. Introspective, it seems like so far. So we worked to train local yeah. residents to literally put the favelas on the maps. Wow, that's and a now, significant effort. Many of these businesses are seeing increased sales. More people are visiting their store each day. And many are able to hire new employees, too. Most importantly, being on the map became something akin to a proof of existence for these businesses. Many of the entrepreneurs told us it gave them confidence in their business. The whole community benefited. Favelas are essentially slums. We're the maps experience to make it work better for, lo for users' local needs. For example, we're bringing our transit experience to new places all the time. So Google Maps can now help you navigate the transit systems of Mexico City and Sao Paulo. Maybe or travel by rail is not anywhere in India. Pejorative, but <laughs> Finally, that's what they are. Finally, we've been working hard to make Google Maps work offline. How about low-income community? Maps, that's been. You won't need to suck down expensive data or have super reliable connectivity every time you want to navigate somewhere. Let's take a look. This is a good way, I think, Let's to respond to this City. issue. I've saved this map As opposed to saying, look, work within our walled and garden. Just to mm -hmm. show you that we're really talking the about offline area. maps. Let's go ahead and put the phone in airplane mode. Oh, this will, we, we okay. can all benefit so from this. Yeah, mode. definitely. No internet connection. But you'll notice that I can still do things like search for places. I've heard great things about the Museo Sumaya in Mexico City. So let's search for that. So you've had this capability if you thought ahead and right. you, you can highlighted an area. <clears throat> it sounds and like it's I doing it. I mean, can you? I mean, can I say, give me the New York map of New York City and probably I would go guess street not. level offline? Yeah, I would guess not, unless you're in New York City and then it's going to. So I would guess cash. Place. Yeah. Yeah. Automatic. Cash. And how much is it cashing going on? Right. Well, that's what I was thinking. This. It's got that's the entire. Gene and I are on the same now, page. For the first time. <laughs> You can also get turn by turn voice directions wow. offline as well. Wow, that's very interesting. This looks like a pretty great museum, so let's go. So, yeah, that's wow. So, there, that is a significant amount of information. I wonder how large that radius is. Yeah, exactly. How much is it actually downloading? Yeah. Hopefully, at least a few out of there have good Spanish. There you have it. Now I can search and navigate in the real world. 
online. It's, or it's ironic because Google hid the offline download of maps, really made it difficult to find. Mm -hmm. As if they didn't People want anybody to do it. To be able to navigate and explore the world, now everybody's going to do it. Ever they are, on a good connection or a spotty one. So we're excited about bringing maps offline, starting later this year. Google is committed to making our platforms and our products work well for the next billion people who are going to come online. But it's not just about the work that we're doing. We're most excited by the entrepreneurship, the leadership, and the creativity that we see from developers in these markets. Some Ken from Chicago today. in the chat room says you can size, you can pick what size you want to download yeah. in the options. So yeah, so if you yeah. do the off offline downloading, you. It's, you can pick any area. It doesn't even have to pick the radius. You can pick yeah. any area at all. Um, and then select a radius and then we'll download it. I don't know how much it downloads, and I doubt very much it does turn by turn without uh, connectivity. So this is new. You're watching live coverage of Google I.O., their big keynote from 2015. Aaron Newcomb is here. Uh, Ron Richards from All About Android. Gina Trapani from ThinkUp. Somebody you don't know. By somebody you don't Our show today brought to you, as always, by Braintree Payments. We love these guys. If you're a mobile developer, you want an easy way to accept multiple payment types with one integration, quick, knowledgeable developer support if you have questions, and an easy SDK that just takes a few lines to integrate, you got to take a look at Braintree's V.0 SDK. Makes it easy to offer multiple mobile payment top types, including starting today. I love it. They haven't put it on the website yet. Android Pay, along with Apple Pay and PayPal, and Bitcoin, and Venmo. Actually, there is a web page if you want to know more about Android Pay integration, which you get as you get everything else automatically. Braintreepayments.com slash Android Pay. And if you're interested in Braintree's V.0 SDK, visit Braintreepayments.com slash twit. They've got a sandbox you could try. It's just a small snippet of code. You'll be set up in less than 10 minutes. And as a little bit of incentive, your first $50,000 in transactions fee free. BraintreePayments.com slash twit. And again, congratulations, Braintree, on being one of the very first to offer Android Pay. And you can find out more at BraintreePayments.com slash Android Pay. Those are happy Braintree users just loving Braintree. No, no, that's actually, this is Google's video. <laughs> but you know, it works. I'm just saying. It does work. Just saying. Going back to Inbox, I just enabled it for my uh, Google uh, apps. If you use Google Google's Google automatic Google. categorization in Gmail already, I think you'll find it pretty good. By the way, another thing they've added is the ability to swipe and delete as well as swipe and archive. Your choice. Oh, nice. Yeah. I do that's, that a lot. That's, that's, one of been, that's been one of my pet peeves is yeah. the you have to archive. And it's like, well, some things I just want to delete. Right. Can I have the option? Yeah. Yes, you do. No, I do. Yes, you may. All right. I'm downloading Inbox now. As Ron just said, he <laughs> oh, got look his... At it. Apps working. You have, to, you have to enable it, but it works. So. Now, I would like to talk to you about some of the Your uh, admin has to enable it for Google for yeah, work. Yeah, correct. For you to build these kinds of Sounds like you're your own two, admin. Two clicks. Yeah, yeah I'm my own admin. I'm so. my own admin. I leave the developer product group. I've been at Google a little bit more than a year now. And before that, I was, like, like many of you here, uh, working with my team to try and make our app great. This gives me a unique perspective both the challenges and the opportunities that Google offers to developers. Okay, I'm thinking he's a C-level executive really as a startup. That's the only people who use challenges and opportunities. The company, it to, make, <laughs> to bring you the best developer offering and experience across Android, iOS, and the mobile web. Google has always worked with developers, building powerful platforms that have enabled massive innovation. But mobile has really evolved. The so Blazers make our offerings more cohesive. Yeah, <laughs> actual sports. And let you use the same APIs across platforms to build the apps that you want. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how we're helping you throughout our development ex your development life cycle. I'll go over some of the improvements to help you develop, somebody's engage. Saying, audio and says it feels like somebody, a character from Silicon Valley. First, let's yeah. talk about developing your apps. We want to give you the tools you need to quickly build the apps as as quickly and reliably as possible across platforms. First, let's talk about developer tools. Last December, his shirt is we not tucked in. Android I want to point Studio out. So. Today, Early. we're sharing a preview of version <laughs> 1.3. No, he's not wearing it. Aviato T-shirt, including faster Gradle build speeds. <laughs> Aviato. <laughs> Aviato. I love that Aviato van. Now we That's the only that. relic of the yeah. of the first season. Yeah. On the App Store, 
uh, in the Play Store actually use the native development kit or NDK. So Gina, do you, do you use Android Studio? Is oh, I, I've been my my, uh, my poor Android app has been severely neglected, oh. and I haven't I haven't moved over to it yet. Yeah. yeah. This is built on IntelliJ. I, I need, they're it. giving it away. IntelliJ was a commercial product, or still a commercial project. So they're adding uh, support for C and C++ to Android Studio in addition to Java. The Polymer library cool. brings visually rich yeah, I'm not sure. Games. Desktop, desktop apps and games. Games, that's, that's it. Oh, so much games is done in C++. Even, C++. even on Android and... Well, I mean, just it, just in terms of bridging the gap. Yeah, from, yeah. You know. Oh, here's Polymer. This is the other thing that yeah. we knew was coming. Easy to drop in common features like toolbars and menus. Services like this is a design, a rapid application a design UI. Checkout flow yeah. In your web app. Now, I mentioned iOS. Oh no, or is this the? We've always had iOS libraries, but we're starting to bring them together into a cohesive SDK hmm. to improve iOS? the developer experience for iOS. We'd like to announce that CocoaPods will now be the default distribution channel for our SDK. See, I don't, I'm not sure. I guess if you're already doing an Android app and you want to add an iOS app, this makes sense. For dependency management. But gosh, if you're doing iOS, why not use and Xcode? Into Xcode. Oh. Starting today, you can get Google Analytics, Google Maps, and many other libraries all via CocoaPods. Yeah, this is just a distribution channel for their iOS uh, development kits. Onto, into onto Xcode. Testing. Into yeah. Xcode, yes. The Android ecosystem has continued to grow and provides users a diverse that range of devices to choose from. Yeah. Cross, well, they, they, they want everybody to be able to do cross-platform, right? access to two or three yeah. to test with, and certainly not to those that are available outside of your country. To help with this challenge, we are releasing Cloud Test Lab, a platform built on top of our acquisition of App Purify to automate the testing of mobile apps. So this is cool. all very inside baseball for developers. Mm -hmm. And obviously, All they're you thrilled. All you do is upload your app, and yeah. we'll automatically run it on run tests across the top. 20 yeah, this Android is one of the most painful parts of developing an Android we'll app is making sure it works across every videos, device. Yeah. And so you want to automate this kind of thing, and right. this is this is what this tool allows. Got it. Automated testing. Play developer console uh, soon. Seeing it all the different screen sizes and device and tablets and things like that. That's, that's key. We've been talking about a lot of ways that we're making it easier to develop on Android, iOS, and the mobile web. Now let's talk about back-end services. Firebase makes it easy to quickly build, build an app without spinning up servers or writing back-end code. It provides data, data uh, storage, user authentication, and asset hosting. Firebase is now used by over 190,000 developers, including Citrix, Instacart, and CBS. This is not owned by Google. And for apps that have more complex infrastructure requirements, Google Cloud Platform offers many useful services from it? compute and storage to handling big data. We're seeing great adoption from companies large and small, including Khan Academy, EA, and Snapchat. So once you've finished developing your app, the next step is to get users and keep them coming back. So now I'm going to talk to you about ways to engage users with free tools, app install ads, and on Google Play. First, let's talk about Google Search, where over 100 billion searches happen every month. With app indexing, it allows you to index your app content into Google Search results, just like web content. Yep. Today, we have over 50 billion app links and, and growing. App indexing is available on Android. We're piloting it, piloting it on iOS. And it's great Andy in our chat room is reporting he just updated his Google Plus free. app and Photos has been removed. Another free tool we have mm. is ah. messaging. That's interesting. You're right. Why not the keep most it there? Popular way to send messages for people I, I that don't like see the Google updates. Plus. Yeah, Sending sure. over 70 billion messages every day through over 600,000 apps. Today, I'm going to talk about two significant improvements we're releasing to cloud messaging. First, we're expanding well, I hope they don't the take it out of the web version of Google Plus and broadening the platform to iOS. Yeah. You can now. You can now use the same messaging infrastructure across all these yeah, platforms. Photos is still in my Secondly, ostensibly we're current to version of Google Plus on Android. In cloud messaging. Google Plus is updating example, on my phone right now. Is it? Oh, app, well. Yep. A user who's interested in the TED radio hour. You know, they kind of made it hard to, to see. You had a, It wasn't an obvious With spot. In cloud messaging, I wonder if that was the beginning of the end. subscribes to a particular radio show. And for NPR, they can send a single notification that fans out across all subscribers. For you... 
This means less database management and fewer lines of code. This is what we'll be doing we're in the also uh, making it easier to engage with users Twitter on the mobile apps. web. Through Chrome, Although we were going to use a to Facebook OS level notification tool called from your Parse website. To do it. Hmm. Additionally, uh, of course, that's users platform. who engage frequently with your site can add it to their home screens. These features bring the power of native development to the mobile web experience. So we've talked about ways you can engage users for free. Now let's talk about app install hmm. ads. Photos are still in Google Plus. Particularly smaller ones. <laughs> still there. They want to start marketing their app, but they don't have At dedicated least in the version feeds. you got. So we're yeah, making it exactly. simpler with the introduction of universal app campaigns. All you have to do is set your budget and the cost you're willing to pay per user. And we'll set up an automated campaign with the right ad inventory across search, ad mob, YouTube, and the new search ads we're piloting in Google Play. This Search feature will ads. be available in the Google Play Developer Console and in AdWords Google in a few months. Play. Through that Google Analytics, sense. you can already track the, the effectiveness of your app install ads on Android. Today, we're adding support for iOS with over 20 ad networks, including InMobi and Millennial Media. We will continue to invest in delivering the best in cross-network and lifetime value attribution. We also Thank believe God, that you should have a choice of the need is lifetime use. attribution. And think that the entire mobile industry is stronger when we have transparent, open, and reliable tools for measurement. We remain committed to our integrations with partners such as Tune and Kachava, and are proud to have their support in our open approach. <laughs> now let's zoom in on Android developers. We frequently okay. hear from you that you love the Google Play Developer Console. It's a great tool for publishing your app. We got to remind you, it is a developer's console. Yes, better tool yes. For you to acquire and engage users. And these are important bits now for the oh, yeah. developers. Yeah. You'll be able to see how many this people are looking at your listing and making purchases in addition to how many install your app. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Because you want to be able to measure this to see, you, you know, people looking and funnel. moving away. Yeah. Right. You'll also be able to or see buy. where your valuable, your this is the conversion funnel. come from across organic and paid traffic. And now that you have access to this data, you're going to want to use it to make your listing even better. Starting today, you can run experiments on your Play Store listing. Hmm. This is the A-B testing we're talking about. Different versions yeah, of graphics yeah. and text and see which drives more downloads. We do all the number crunching for you. This is really powerful. In our powerful. pilot program, we were thrilled to see that developers such as Congregate got double-digit lists in their, uh, in their App Store listing conversion rates. And this created a significant impact on their business. That's for developers awesome. who recognize the power of marketing so tools like this, this is huge. App, yeah, absolutely. Let users explore all of them. Starting today, we're allowing you to create your own Google Play homepage. Upload your graphics, explain what your company is all about, and pick oh, a that's special great. app feature. Oh, that's nice. So you can control the branding and the message of your, of your you single company. To all from your company, of your apps yeah. On the Play yeah. So we've talked about uh, acquiring and engaging users. And for some of you, it's not just about developing for apps for fun. You've, all, you've also got to pay the rent. Now, there's lots of ways to earn money, but today I want to sp specifically focus on AdMob, which helps you run ads inside of your app. We want monetization to be smarter for you. So we've integrated Google Analytics into AdMob so that you can get insights as to where your users are in the life cycle of your app. This information is already helping app developers make decisions about their in-app advertising. For example, if you have a gaming app, you can use analytics to understand how long it takes for users to complete a level. You can show fewer ads to the users that finish a level quickly and show in-app promotions to those that need a little help. This will help you maximize your revenue in a way that, that protects your user experience. Mediation is a way to run other ad networks through the AdMob platform and creates more competition in your app. Today, we support over 40 ad networks uh, in our mediation partners, having added 15 in the last year alone. And we're proud to announce our newest partner, Tencent, one of the largest mobile ad networks in China. We think these features will give you the flexibility to make the right decisions for both your users and your app. <laughs> So today but what I'm about middle out compression? How do you handle that? <laughs> users and earn with Google. What's your Weissman score? <laughs> yeah. Continue to innovate. We're working hard to nail the fundamentals. 
And with each re each new release, you will see more efficient, easier to use APIs. It was great when I was going down to work um, on Android and iOS. the other day. It was actually the last time I was on uh, this week in Google. I was going from here to work. So I go to work and I saw the Pied Piper uh, billboard. Nice. Uh, There's actually a Pied Piper billboard? Oh, they're all over. Yeah. This is from the show Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took a picture of it. Or maybe I found a picture online and posted it on Google Plus, but it was it was hilarious. I was like, Pied Piper, where do I know that from? And then I'm like, because it looks so authentic. They really get that right. So yep. I'm Ellie from the Google Play team, and Google Play continues to scale with the growth of the Android ecosystem. We're helping users all over the world get the most out of their devices. I like that we've dress. We've delivered mm -hmm. 50 billion app installs in just the She was on last year's year. I.O. We're getting We're to the well-dressed portion of the Yeah. Every single day. <laughs> So as people around the world have their very first experience with a smartphone each day. Huli.xyz. That, that site is hysterical. <laughs> and today, Play is growing twice as quickly in markets Inspiration. India, Southeast Asia, and Exploration. Middle East as the rest It of takes the world. a big head to dream big. users on Play just love games. <laughs> Many of you are already using Play game services to build multiplayer games and make your games more social. The Moonshot Factory. The moon millions shot of users factory. connect to play game services <laughs> through your games, including more than 180 million new users in the past six months alone. So, if you're an app developer, play so is focus on games. new users. So, the better and more personally relevant that we make the store, the more users come back to play <laughs> to install more apps like yours. And we know that you work hard to grow your user base. So at Play, we also spend a great deal of time thinking about how to match users to your content in the best way possible, to bring users to your apps. So with more than a billion users on Play, the Android ecosystem is extremely diverse. And it makes sense that the Play Store that you see is different from the Play Store. So these last two people are obviously in sales, right? And we found that using <laughs> personalization it's the way it the seems to me. I mean, they're well coiffed, well dressed, well spoken. Yeah. The search also plays a big role. Yeah, this is all about marketing and yeah, and, yeah. You know, productizing. It's right? funny how the, you know the hoodie versus the mm -hmm. blazer. I, I still want to see a woman in a hoodie come out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, with fringe it's tips and, you know, I think the whole... <laughs> the user really wants, right? And that same search results page just doesn't cut it. We can be a lot smarter about helping the user find exactly the right app. Uh, people so in now, Shimer are saying that dress is brown. For a search like shopping. <laughs> 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 this way, people can see and understand oh, the full range of shopping apps that are available. Oh, interesting. Look at this and categorization really and search results. Organizing results in this new way not only delivers more installs, but from a much wider range of developers than before. And with search results, they're they easier and more They really need to, to do something to fix search in Google Play because it's with so many apps, it's just a mess in there now. Yeah, I something. have to tell you, though, it is the best of the big three. Uh, True. Uh, Windows phone search is execrable. Mm. Apple often uh, doesn't find apps that are, especially big apps, that are obviously there. So at least I think Play works at the best of the three. It may not be perfect. But. You see passionate Android developers. So many people announce that they have a new Android app, and then you search for it in the Play yeah. Store, and you don't see it because yeah. yeah. exactly. the indexing takes so long. It takes a yeah. while, yeah. We know that parents only want the And discovery is just a pain. Like, I want to find a new spreadsheet app or something. You know, it's hard yeah. to find new. You want, a, you want some fun. Search for VLC in the Windows phone store. Family discovery oh, jeez. It makes it much easier for parents yep. to find high-quality, family-friendly apps, games, movies, TV shows, and books on Google Play. So parental controls, Google Play, kid-friendly, kid-friendly yeah. content. Star. So this gives us and parents an easy way to find the right content yep. throughout the store. And you'll we find this was star coming. on all of our family-friendly content. That's smart. So for example, when you navigate to the family home, some of this is browse content based on mandated by the Federal the Trade Commission, which has been unhappy about yeah. in-app purchases. For, yep. And it signals to parents that they can trust the quality of your content. Top charts and searches from within the family homepage are filtered. We only display the apps and games that have met the Design oh, for Families program that's criteria. Cool. This way, parents can feel comfortable with their content choices. And growing up, every kid has their favorite character from books or TV, right? <laughs> and so Smart. now, you can use the popular character browser or the character badge. We're about to two find hours it. in. So, any Star Wars fans still here? Still no VR. We have, I figure. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, you'll have a, a lot cardboard. of content to explore. And let's find my favorite. Dora the Explorer. My I'm favorite, too. I'm secretly a huge fan. 
and you'll be taken to a dedicated. Why don't I? Why don't I believe that? And finally, <laughs> Dora's Dora's good stuff. No, Dora's great if you have kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We provide objective third-party content ratings for all apps. We have a new set of parental controls. Swiper, no swiping. We stronger password protection for in-app purchases. So it's not a separate store. store it's just more support for family-friendly filtering within the Google Play Store. So do you think they gave her that Android Wear watch as she started to walk out on the stage? <laughs> Everyone has had a watch on. Have you yeah. noticed that, by the way? Yeah. Here's your watch. Let's make Android fantastic for families together. Well, it's better than glass. We never saw one of the presenters wearing glass. That's a good point. For, yeah, sure. for uh, Sergey, right? Yeah. I just don't think she would have chosen a brown band. She carefully chose that dress. I... Thank you. Sundar. It's great to see Google Play for families. As a father of two, I've had my share of Dora. Yeah. And I hope all of you get to enjoy that experience as well. <laughs> my share. So we, just thank God you're not, it's not Barney. can build amazing experiences on top of a platform. Can you turn him up a little bit? He's yeah, I was just going to say. We really want to enable the next generation it's all the way. Of developers. Turn it up all the way. Wow. A lot of us take for We're granted on the skills we have in this room. Yes. You earlier <laughs> heard about the next billion users coming online. It is important we empower others to become developers so that they can build the next set of experiences. So we've been working with Udacity. Udacity is a leading provider of massively nice. scalable online education. I and love so I'm Udacity. very excited to announce today we are launching the Android Nano Degree. Nice. <laughs> if there's good. a smaller degree, oh. we don't know it. They, they, uh, Udacity this announced these nano degrees a long time ago. This is awesome. Month. And we cover the entire life cycle of Android development. Oh, All I'm going to do this. Details like Google Play services. So a nano degree is what? It's just Google like two or three courses. Uh, really focused. Really kind of curriculum. De demeaning the word degree a little. Take, but okay, uh, devaluing uh, it, but okay. At, at this the, point, we're going to shift gears. Take a couple of courses. Take a look ahead. A degree. Talk about the future of computing. Yeah. But it's, about I like this, though, because it shows employers that you're willing to go out and do something, yeah. you but know, without actually having to go get a master's in right. whatever. You know, much more immersive computer science or something. context for you. Not all of your computing experiences is going to be looking at a Coming small soon, Pico black degrees. rectangle in front of you. Think about the icebergs of Greenland. <laughs> you do want an experience. As if you are Thank there you and you can experience the, experience that is the real screen. world Holy for all its goalie. richness. And that is color. Beautiful. Look at the real world so for all its richness. A lot about how to bring the it's real a 4K. world to users in a more immersive way. <laughs> it is the real you world. Always cared about it. Google Maps has been doing street view, imagery, trying to capture the real world. So we started our efforts here with Google Cardboard. Uh -huh. The Cardboard there team is. was a 20% project. We launched it at last year's Google I.O. And they've been thinking hard about VR and how to get a much more immersive... I have a femto degree in cardboard. To talk about that, <laughs> I'm going to invite Playbauer onto the stage. All right, here's the VR stuff. <laughs> We've been waiting for. It comes yeah. after femto, atto. As Sundar said, uh, a here's year a ago, on this very stage, we introduced Google Cardboard. I have and a Zepto. our goal with Cardboard was to make oh, reality nice available to everyone. And so this is the manual, with, Gina, that you did not read on the way. <laughs> right. <last year. laughs> added some lenses and a rubber band. And amazingly enough, that was all you needed to turn your smartphone into a fully yeah, functional VR it. viewer. And there's been incredible excitement about cardboard ever since. What began as a single open design has turned into an entire ecosystem of manufacturers making cardboard in all shapes and sizes. There are over 100 apps, there you go, Aaron. hundreds That's of apps, talking about. on the Google Play Store that are compatible are, are, with Google Cardboard. What are we going to see? A, including uh, apps from folks like Jaunt and Verse. Who a are viewer uh, today. And people keep finding new and uh, creative uses of Cardboard and VR. Campus tours, yeah, what is the... uh, art shows. Uh, one guy even proposed to his girlfriend with the help of oh. Cardboard. God, uh, I hope she said that. I'm not actually know. totally sure how that works, <laughs> uh, but the important thing is that she said yes. Oh, she did. You guys are terrible. <laughs> Today, I hope she said I'm no. proud to say there are more than one uh, million honey, cardboard viewers. Put out this there on. Wow. <laughs> Wait, one million cardboard viewers. Bills of cardboard or different? We okay. When we folded our first piece of cardboard, immersive experiences just like these for everyone. And we really couldn't have done it without your help. Everyone who folded your own cardboard, who built an app, who filmed a spherical video, thank you. Of course, YouTube Today, supports I'm really excited yeah. to give you a glimpse of what's next for cardboard and for our larger efforts in VR. 
There are three ah. things I'd like to share. The first of those is an improved cardboard viewer. Now, the original viewer, it was great, but phones, turns out, got a lot bigger in the last year. <laughs> and so Nexus the new design viewer. fits phones with screens that are large and <laughs> six inches. It's even more cardboard the, for your yeah. Even more cardboard. The, uh, the magnet button, if you remember, six inch cardboard. was a clever way to do input, but it didn't work on oh. every phone. And so yeah, there's a view master button. That does, uh, one yeah. that's cool. actually made out of cardboard. Uh, and now, instead of it taking 12 steps to assemble, it takes just... Is this like the intermission? So I can't believe they're today from touting there are no software. easily assembled cardboard. Me too. Just like last year, you'll get one immediately after the oh, keynote. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Crowd goes wild. Yeah, first giveaway. Piece yes. of cardboard. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it works with any phone, it fits any phone, the button works with Nexus every phone. Q. But the software, the cardboard SDK, it needs to work with every phone too. And so, as of today, the cardboard SDK for Unity six inches, will support work with both six. Android and iOS. Oh, an wow. iPhone dog. No, sorry. Yeah. Maybe. So oh, we just said it. iOS. Yeah. So iOS support. Yeah. If you're creating a VR experience and you want to bring it to everyone, you think cardboard can help. That's the cardboard update. Lots of manufacturing partners, hundreds mm -hmm. of apps, over cardboard 1 app million is out. viewers. And it's still now with a piece of 20 percent more cardboard, says Klaus. <laughs> Second thing. I want to share today is about how we're bringing VR and its unique ability to take you other places and bringing that to some place that's pretty special. And that's the classroom. Just think about your favorite field trip growing up. There's something amazing about visiting a place, seeing it up close, experiencing it with your own eyes. But of course, the yeah, school Google bus, needs something go in the middle here. You can't and go to the cover moon. both ends of the spectrum. Uh, yeah. can't go to another Google Glass back in a day. on one end, can't go to the bottom cardboard on the ocean. other. But VR can help take you to those places, which is why today we're excited to announce Expeditions. Mm, kind of hmm. uncertain is this applause. It's like a cardboardy map thing? Expeditions lets teachers take their classes on field trips to anywhere. Here's how it works. So a okay, box class, arrives put your, with put your everything cardboard you on. need to travel. <laughs> cardboard and phones for every student, a teacher tablet, and all of these devices are synchronized. So that the, when the teacher yep. chooses a place, the entire classroom ah. jumps there together. Cool. This is getting ready for VR, I tell That's you. That's cool. We're yeah. getting there. And the response from students and teachers has just been... Sorry incredible. the level's so low. This is what we're getting from Google. We've, we're pumping it up as much as we can. It's actually getting quieter as it goes. It is, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Lower our level, uh, Jason. That way uh, people can turn it up at home and... We India, won't boom out to Nigeria, well. my homeland. One or maybe all of the seven wonders of the world. When the You're watching our live coverage of Google I.O.'s 2015 keynote, now hour be three just beginning. There's something outside of your community that you could go to and learn from. And that show they brought to you by BraintreePayments.com. Braintree is an amazing right, way to so incorporate payments and we'll talk about into your levels. mobile app, including now Android so, Pay, PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo. Yes, Android Pay. That's what I love about the Braintree V.0 SDK. It's just, it just happens. A couple of lines of code, and you're all set up less than 10 minutes. If you want to know more about the Android Pay integration, their Android Pay beta is online at braintreepayments.com slash Android Pay. And if you'd like to use Braintree in your next app, I want you to go to braintreepayments.com slash twit because we can get you your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free. Braintreepayments.com. Slash Twit, we thank them so much for their support of our breaking news and event coverage at Twit. You know, the cardboard, the problem is there's still a $600 phone inside the cardboard. Right, right. Yeah. There's so much other places to see, so you know that it's never going to end. <laughs> the cardboard kind of hides the fact that yeah. this is still a very expensive VR helmet. It's roughly the same price as an Oculus Rift. <laughs> <laughs> right, Actually. All in, right. All in. Well, ten cents for the cardboard, six hundred dollars for the phone. Thanks to an incredible group of educators, hundreds of classes all around the world have already gone on expeditions. And today, teachers who want to create their own, who want to bring expeditions to their school, can sign up online. Now, we're also partnering with I some they could, amazing so organizations. Mike like P. in the chat was saying maybe they could use Android the American One, the Museum really of expensive Natural ones. History, mm -hmm. in the Palace I of Versailles. I don't know how much cardboard create requires. Create new expeditions and bring those to schools and plus, around kids, the world. Kids have smaller heads anyway, so this fall. you don't need the big phone. So that's expeditions, field trips to anywhere for every classroom.
Well, even if it's a fifty dollar phone times thirty kids, it's, it's still going to be a lot. Yeah. But you know what? School, it's, Third and final thing I want to talk about. At least about in the U.S., schools could afford that. Capturing though. Right. and sharing these real world experiences. A lot of like kids have phones the these days right. too. I mean, just think of how many millions of dollars schools are spending right now. At least around one where I live, on tablets and, and right. laptops, like Chromebooks, whatever. Because the world is filled with all of these awesome places and events like Great Barrier Reefs and Golden Gate Bridges and birthday no, parties there's only and one. mountaintops. <laughs> but there's a problem. Just one. If you can't one. actually be there, if you want to go back to a place or a time, then your experience is pretty limited. Because cameras kind of only capture the world like this. It's like watching a, a flat version of the world through a tiny little window. And if you want to capture something that's truly immersive, there are really only a handful of very custom camera rigs in the world. The GoPro just job. announced it's Even going to do a six-camera rig. We want to change that. Won't be cheap. We want to put professional, previously impossible tools in the hands of any creator who's motivated. But that's meant so specifically for VR capture the world around content. Them, and then share it the in a way that lets yeah. all of us jump to the top of that mountain Jump to any Backpack place or event 360 on cameras the for everybody. And experience the sights. <laughs> I'll tell you, the minute they come out with a good, reliable one, I'm buying it because I'd love today, to have that in the studio. I'd like to mm. preview something that we call Jump. 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 Jump enables and, and any creator to at the end of the show, the David Lee Roth. VR video. Yes. And right, it's video just a little, 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 little rock and roll. And make it available to everyone. It has three parts. A camera rig, very specialized geometry. An assembler, which turns raw footage into VR video. And a player. Yeah, this is what GoPro so kind of announced. They acquired a company called so Color. K -O -L -L -O -R. The rigs that we built, they include 16 camera stitching. modules mounted 16 in a circular cameras. array. And you can actually use yes. off-the-shelf cameras for this if you want. Hmm. And you can make the array out of basically yes. any material. You can one build it yourself. 3D yeah. printed plastic, one out of machine metal, uh, and for good measure. Oh, so of they're course, giving you the plans, uh, not the product. Cardboard. Interesting. And it worked. Uh, what's critical the software, is the actual is geometry. Right. And we spent a lot of time optimizing. Everything. The, size the, of the GoPro rig, uh, number was and placement uh, of the device cameras, was six, wasn't it? Six view, cameras. Relative overlap, every last detail. And we seem to be losing the slides here. Every last detail. Say it and again. Now, what we want to do is share what we've learned with everyone. Come on, Harry. So just like we did with cardboard, we're going to be opening up the camera geometry with plans available to everyone this summer. Do you need that many cameras? What is the a field of, of view cameras, of yeah. a single camera? So anyone who's motivated will be able to build a jump-ready camera. Now, of course, <laughs> if you're heavily a pro and you've right. done filming with multiple cameras, you know that well it's kind of complicated. Uh, you need synchronized recording, exposure control, and so on. And so we thought it would be good if someone who really knows how to build a great camera could help out. So oh, we called our friends go. at GoPro. Uh, yeah. And today, it is. I'm excited right. to announce that GoPro plans to build and sell a jump-ready 360-degree camera array. All right. Nice. Smart. Very smart. Now, GoPro, of course, has enabled people to capture some of the world's most awesome experiences, including spherical content. And they're bringing their camera expertise to the jump-ready rig, which will include shared camera settings, frame-level synchronization, and other features that will allow all 16 cameras to operate as one. Here's what it looks like. <laughs> there it is. So GoPro's wow. actually here with us oh, today. They brought on. one of their rigs, and it's in our IO sandbox, if you want to check Look it out. Look at that. Okay. So that's the camera geometry. Next up is what we call the assembler. And this is where the Google magic really begins. Yeah, the software is key on this. The assembler takes obviously. 16 different video feeds and uses a combination of computational real photography time? computer vision, Feeds and a whole lot of computers to recreate the scene as viewed from thousands of in-between viewpoints everywhere along the circumference of the camera array. And we then use these in-between viewpoints to synthesize the final imagery, stereoscopic VR video. Let me yeah, show you an example of how the assembler creates one single frame of VR video. So first, we take the raw camera data and we do a rough alignment. Next, we perform a global color calibration and exposure compensation, and things start to look a bit better. Yeah, but if we zoom that. in, you'll see wow. there's still seams looks like between the, uh, some of the images. Mo photosphere. Chopper? Moto? Uh, yeah, here. photosphere. To fix those, no, I'm thinking algorithms the places, use actually, information yeah. about the underlying the structure of the scene to perform a three-dimensional <laughs> alignment. potato cannon? And the 3D alignment works by compensating for the depth of different objects oh, in the nice. scene. Oh, like nice. Yeah, this. software's very key on this. And it's this understanding of depth that also enables us to create all of those in-between viewpoints, mm. which you can see here. Wow. Like 
this. Triple eight between that. That looks seamless. That's amazing. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's, that's nice. Wow. Holy that's man. pretty amazing. That's some flare from the light, but otherwise, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like how the light flares. Cool. Yeah. It's a fundamentally different and more advanced approach than anything else we've seen. And unlike other solutions, you don't see borders where the cameras are spliced together and you have beautiful, accurate, depth-corrected stereo in all directions. Now, we've actually built a bunch of these cameras and sent them to places all over the world, mm. from the Google campus in Mountain View to Iceland to Japan, and we've captured some really beautiful places. How much your GoPros? I have to say, you got to see these properly bucks? in yeah. VR. It depends on which um, one you get. The nice ones, yeah. But let's see some footage so, here on stage. Click 16 cameras, 400 bucks. Six thousand. the wraparound bucks. screens. Oh, yeah, that's neat. Clef, that's probably why the screen is. Yeah, wraparound. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this works video. with video, right. which I think is very interesting. Yeah. But I want to do this here. Broadcasting, but and nobody really has a live streaming for cardboard yet. Yeah, live streaming for cardboard. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. I mean, people have done this kind of thing in film for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, it's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah. Where do you see this footage in VR? That's near what's interesting. Near, if you can look or around. Things look far, and you can look. It's crazy. All around you. It's it's interesting is that these are horizontal now, cameras. Assembling They're, footage the other like this GoPro camera takes goes thousands all, of computers. Mm. And we want to make this processing power broadly available. So this summer, we'll begin making the Jump Assembler available to select creators worldwide. But this leaves one question. Where are people going to watch this stuff? How do you see it? Uh, are we going to make it what? so that Let me think. anyone um, can experience it? YouTube? We've been working on YouTube? something for that, too. And uh, we call it YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> So, starting this summer, YouTube will support Jump. Uh, so, if you want to really experience good, VR video, that's actually all really you good because they could have just put this into photos, right? right? Like they've right. done in the past. Now, in the meantime, uh, so this is starting this week, you can try out basic non-stereoscopic 360 content in YouTube and cardboard. That's Jump, an open camera design with a fully integrated version from GoPro on the way. An assembler that turns raw footage into VR video with the help of thousands of computers. I guess and they didn't want to use super wide-angle lenses because of distortion all of this will and be available issues. This summer. And I am so excited to, to see what you all create. You're still you looking at watching the YouTube in a tiny little VR. rectangle, though, right. you guys. Like well, I've, I've seen well, no, but that's the point. It's, it's, it's cardboard compatible, so you go to that, who, that YouTube video, play it on your cardboard. Now you can look around. Right, right, right. And, of course, cardboard. Where we got started, the beginning of our journey. Cardboard is about VR for absolutely everyone. Somebody in the chat room said, I saw this in 1964 Thank at you. Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> Circle Yeah. That's true, but Google's making it real. Yeah, and you really can, and any, anybody can do, can do to I mean, bring the real world alive. Anybody with six thousand four hundred bucks to throw away. Yeah. Projects like this, yeah. bold approaches like this, is a, is at the heart of. How we oh, I think this is approach exciting. Approach problems for users. I often get asked, "How does search, Android, photos, and things like this? How do they relate to each other?" So now you work for at us, the Google, right? It is about so how do you Google search Android photos? Putting technology <laughs> and computer science. <laughs> he gets that. He goes to like to family get-togethers. Yeah. So now you work at that Google place, right? Uses space <laughs> and do it at scale for everyone in the world. It's kids' school. Take driverless cars. The reason we work on driverless cars is it's something people do every day. <laughs> Too bad. And in the U.S., just last year, there were over 33,000 deaths. That's almost 100 people who die every day on That's roads. Sad. Isn't that terrible? We really want to make a difference, and we think technology can do that. We started with driving a few Priuses around in parking lots. Our Lexus hybrid vehicles have now driven more than 1 million miles autonomously without a single incident having been caused by the self-driving car. We just announced last week the prototypes are next-generation prototype. They're actually <laughs> going to be driving around in Mountain View. My kid and has if you that. take it's a look at Tonga, what the right? car sees when it is driving <laughs> around, that is all the machine learning I talked about earlier. Yeah. 
The purple boxes are other cars. The size reflects the size of the vehicle. You're seeing yellow appear there, which is pedestrians. So the car is using computer vision to navigate accurately. It's incredible computer science at work, which makes a difference. In the past, and this isn't project widely Loon spread about, is another bold project. Google's self-driving cars had to go on roads that had previously mapped by the edge of space. I wonder if they're to the point now where they can just go and do it, mm -hmm. just drive Actually, anywhere. Yep. Yeah, you're saying that's what that machine learning can do now. Right. You know, it can it can detect what's what's around it, whether pedestrian or cars. Right. Our balloons can stay up for over 100 days. The previous I world record was I think the best thing Silicon Valley did was NASA. retire the term moonshot. We today <laughs> can deliver yeah, the word moonshot, yeah. 10 megabits per second directly to handsets. And these are all Google X We can projects. cover areas mm -hmm. four times the size of what we used to before, an uh, area the size of Rhode Island. And we are very excited that now we can connect the balloons so that we can this reach actually turned out to be a a more of a success than Google we expected. We can navigate they these balloons. Worried about balloon durability, and they've accuracy. turned out to be better than expected. We are actually testing Project Loon live. So in New Zealand, working with Vodafone New Zealand, we provided live coverage for well over a day, and now we are expanding our partnerships with Telefonica, Telstra. We are in discussions with telecom carriers who have over a billion subscribers totally. Projects like these, be it search, be it Android, be it organizing your photos, being a, taking an immersive trip to Greenland, is at the heart of what we try to do. Using technology at work to solve problems for everyone in the world. This is why I.O. is so exciting for us. We get to share what we have been up to in the last year, and all you developers get to go out and build amazing things on top of what we do. So I can't wait to see what you build next year. Thank you so much for joining us. Good luck and see Very you next nice. year. Very nice. Two hours and 15 minutes. We planned for two and a half. Yeah, Sundar not, not Pichai, Pichai, the only uh, yeah. high-level Google executive to take the stage. No Larry Page. No Sergey. Um, no Sergey. Although I got to say that really, we, we knew it, but it certainly cements the notion that Sundar Pichai is running the show. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, th I thought we would. I thought for sure we would see Larry do what he did last year. Um, so I'm really surprised he didn't come out. Well, it was two years ago. Did two he come out? Ago. Was it two yeah. years ago? I yeah. thought it was last year. Yeah, I think. You're talking about the, you're talking about the, the, well the skydive. That was Sergey. That was crazy Sergey in the skydive. And sky that was dive. three years ago. So well, yeah. that, that was I thought Larry ago. came out last year and talked about his uh, innovation he did a island. Or the island. Yeah. Well, that was that was two years ago. Two years ago. Oh my word. It was two years ago. I don't think that served them well. I think they clearly decided not to have not have him do that again. Too off off script. Too impromptu. Um, they began with, of course, talking about M, which we have still not don't have a dessert for, although I think Aaron Newcomb is right on when he says Milky Way. And they implied that because the videos preceding the keynote were of, in fact, a tour of the Milky Way. Yeah. Going yes. from uh, way out in the galaxy to uh, actually starting from the central galaxy to go way out to us. Uh, they uh, talked about new features of M. Not, really no surprises there. Everything we already knew about a fingerprint API. Um, what else? Uh, Android they? Pay. Android Pay, which is essentially a rebranded uh, wallet, Google Wallet, but uh, with some additional features. Um, and hopefully additional availability. Doze for power and charging, right? That'll be nice. Very nice. You know, battery mm -hmm. is the biggest, I think, right now pain point for mobile. Uh, and uh, they also announced that uh, 17 million Chromecasts had been sold, that HBO Now was coming to Android. That's big news. Um, the developer preview is available now on Nexus devices, so if you want to download that, you can uh, you can put that on. You have to change the firmware, obviously. Um, Q3 release for M. Q3 release, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Chrome is being uh, modified slightly. Uh Chrome custom tabs will allow uh, sign-in, saved passwords, autofill, multi-process security. This is Chrome on Android, I, I gather. Yeah, custom, custom Chrome tabs within apps. So when apps okay. can use, instead of using a web view, they can utilize Chrome. Got it. Uh, and you can get all the benefits of being logged into Chrome while staying within the app. Got it. Uh, Android Pay is an open platform, uh, so that's uh, good news. Um, uh, the fingerprint toes, support. Fingerprint, Big, yeah. big oh. changes around permissions. Yeah, you won't have to yep. re-approve permissions when you update an app anymore. 
I'm not sure that's an improvement, but I guess you can well, always look at the manifest and see. The, uh, when, yeah, when you get the app, you don't have to grant it permissions. It's when you use the app. You you use ah, iOS yeah. type permissions. And it's granular. Right. So it's not just right. a one for all. Yep, I, I want to do all these things. It's, oh, now, like they showed you, want to use your microphone? Okay, fine. Want to use your camera? Oh, I got to approve that too. Or maybe, no, I'm naked. I don't want to use my camera right now. So that's good. <laughs> oh, no, I'm naked. There should be a that's, no, no, I'm naked. That's the, that's, the practical, that's the practical application here. Let's get serious. Let's uh, microphone? Oh, no, I'm in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah exactly. Thank you. I'm on the jar. Sorry. Type-C charging and connection ports for phones going forward. Google was uh, involved in the creation of Type-C along with Apple and Intel. Uh, in fact, Google's videos about uh, the USB Type-C connector really kind of implied they invented it. I'm sure Apple would have something to say about that. They want, they want the world to think they invented it. But uh, both the Chromebook Pixel and the uh, new MacBook come with Type-C connectors, and I think you're going to see more of those on mobile. So that's very, very good. Uh, minor things like uh, <laughs> Dieter Bohn said, they fixed copy and paste. Volume controls, finally, uh, will be simplified and more granular at the same time. Uh, the volume controls were kind of notoriously bad in uh, mm. Android. Yes, uh, definitely. L. Yep. Google uh, Now on Tap. Google Now on Tap is a very interesting feature uh, in which you can, uh, apparently, Google is reading everything on your screen and you can tap an application without the application being aware. You can tap a uh, a picture or a word in an application and now will pop up with appropriate now cards. C contextual. Yeah, now, in contextual, app now. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Contextual information based on use, you know? So if you're, you know, if someone emails you and says, Hey, let's go to this restaurant and you can just, you know, you, you then pull up, you know, the address of the restaurant, the maps location, the link to open table, like everything, you know, kind of the next step, um, which is a really deep kind of integration and that next action when you receive some information, which I'm fascinated by. I love it. Yeah. So, yeah. I think yeah. we'll welcome it, but some privacy concerns are raised by it because it sounds like Google now is basically admitting we know everything that's happening yep. in all of your apps. We're hoping there's well, the some control the, there. Yeah, I'm sure there will. Yeah, and the, qu the question is whether or not they know and they're saving or if they're just reading and reacting and, and what the what the just, hold time is. Whether they could they're do that, they? You could tap and hold and they could then, then read the screen. Do it on the spot. I bet they're not. Right. There. It would be equivalent saving. of running a Google search, you know, based right. on a couple of words yeah, that you're looking at versus yeah. indexing yeah. all the content in all your apps. I mean, it could be it could be a combination of the two because they want to save that information again so that they can track your habits so they know, you know, oh, you always go to this place or you always do searches for this so that they can deliver more relevant content. So it's both. I think it's a little bit of both, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then a tour of Android Wear. Nothing new to say there except to point out the new features of Android Wear 5.1, which are currently available in the uh, LG Watch, the Urbane, but will soon come to uh, every other Android Wear watch, I believe. That, that section is what I'll ch chalk up as the biggest disappointing section yes. because that, that did nothing other than show us what has rolled out recently with the, with right. the May release of, of Android Wear, um, whatever version it is, what number it is on. And there's no, you know, what you can see coming next or what we're doing with Android Wear or anything like that. I'm really disappointed to see to not see anything there. So, did they that mention... was more of a response to Apple Watch, I think, yeah. than anything yes. else. Yeah. <laughs> well, in particular, they focused on the number of bands available and the number of uh, watch faces, fifteen hundred watch faces. Watch faces. Uh, is many is of, that real? Is that really going to determine the winner in the wear space and the wearables? So. The number of watch faces. Well, Apple I mean, Watch only has seven, right? I mean, it's. I, it's, I mean, that's why I feel like it was such a d d direct response. You know, yeah. they're they're yeah. saying, "Hey, look, you know, this is all the stuff that we do that they don't," without saying it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They, uh, you know, they showed features that people with LG watches will uh, say, "Oh yeah, I can do that," uh, like an ambient. Uh, always on feature for apps as well as for the watch faces. That's another thing, by the way, another dig at Apple Watch, which turns itself off unless you flip it back up. Um, 4,000 Android Wear, 4,000 plus Android Wear apps, too, very uh, significant. These are all, I think this is all Google saying, yeah, we got that. Mm -hmm. We got, we did that. Yep, definitely. We do that. Then on to Brillo, which is an uh, Android-based operating system for the Internet of Things. Uh, Brillo supports Wi-Fi, Bluetooth LE. It is, uh, uh, they said, broad silicon support, which sounds to me like it supports both ARM and x86. And Weave, which Weave. we don't know a lot about, but could be <clears throat> huge, the notion that there is finally a, uh open standard for inter-app uh, or an inter object uh, communications. Yeah. 
This, uh, this is what I'm most excited about is is Brillo and Weave, especially if it's cross platform, uh, which I think I believe they said it was, um, and an API and everything. I mean, it just makes it so much easier. I mean, this is really an area that is untapped right now. I think, and it looks like Google's going to try to go after it. I, I think it's fantastic. And the fact just, that they lost, it. they lost my trust around Android at home though. Right. I mean, they announced Android at home, like what, four years ago. And then it was, That's it. you know, yeah. there was nothing else. Right. Yeah. And it was interesting. They made the point, this is not about the home. This is going to control tractors and it's going to be in the classroom and it's going to, you know, so this was, I, I feel like they were trying to make the distinction like, oh, this isn't Android at home. But to me, I'm as a developer and as a consumer, I'm like, I, you know, I heard about Android at home and nothing came of it. Right. Right. I think this right. is what we were hoping Android home or Android at home was going to be. Right. I mean, this is certainly yeah. what I thought it was going to be. Well, um, I think Android, and they just Android fell down on it. I think Android at home was a little more user based. You know, like you you get home and the garage door opens, and then your your thermostat adjusts and you the lights adjust. And it was more about the user experience. Where it seems like this is going, you know, beneath the surface, and this is the protocol of which all these devices will work. And then from this, you know, I imagine Android Home could be, you know, come out of it. Yeah, um, absolutely. They're yeah, in a yeah. way, they're recontextualizing the smart home to say it's the Internet of Things now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it isn't home; it's farmers with tractors. I don't know yeah. why they focused on that. Me neither. Um, hey, irrigation systems. It's a well, big problem. Well, there you I mean, go. It's a market. Uh, uh, why didn't yeah, they say that? They should have said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but I think that that's something that the entire world's going to have to do. Rethink the notion of a smart home is pretty old fashioned. It's really about uh, internet connected devices, kind of self-aware devices, and the ability to control them using mm -hmm. a central uh, tool. Yeah. Um, it does look like Weave requires Brillo, um, but I can also see people like, say, SmartThings creating Weave interfaces for their devices, mm -hmm. just yeah, as they no, have I think Zigbee and Z-Wave. I think I think Sundar said that said that um, Brillo would work with Weave, but Weave wouldn't require Brillo. Like it was a ah. you know it, you know it was a stack that worked with or without each other. And, okay. And, yeah, right. and we Weave is what's going to tie things together. Brillo is what Google's offering to the table, but other yeah. devices might use other things. So right. yeah. Um, search. We talked. Uh, of course, that's Google. Google's. Photos. Did we talk about photos? No, we're getting photos. there. Oh, sorry. We're, I'm just going <laughs> back in time. I'm going I'm chronologically through this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, we had, well, there wasn't that much to, to say about search. Um, speech recognition accuracy has improved dramatically in 2013. He showed a slide that said it was 23%. It is now down to 8%. And I think most of us agree that that's kind of in those two years, that's about what we've kind of just uh, anecdotally experienced. Google's voice uh, recognition has gotten much better. Um, yeah. And Inbox, uh, we did mention this was an announcement that happened before the keynote or simultaneous with the keynote, that the inbox uh, email app, inbox interface to Gmail was now going invite free so everybody can do it and works with Google for work, which is a big improvement that a mm -hmm. lot of uh, you, especially Aaron. Yeah. And I've got it Ron, set up I, while we were, yep. while we were talking, Jeff, I got Jeff it set Jarvis up and be very happy didn't have to do anything so. in my admin accounts. So yeah. I just, just worked. Some uh, additions to uh, inbox as well. The idea of a travel folder to join social updates and forums. So all your travel, uh, emails will be collected in one place. Uh, Parna uh, Chenapurgata took state took the stage then to talk about Google Now. We mentioned a little bit about this idea that Google Now can be aware of what's going on on the phone and respond to it. It's not just segregated into uh, Google Now uh, and and lots more capabilities. Although most of which we kind of knew about these third party application support uh, for Google Now, showing you gas stations along the way or houses in your neighborhood that just sold things like that. Those are I presume requires some sort of application. Um, and also some intelligence uh, in the uh, Google Now. Uh, you can be listening to Skrillex. I guess this is the tap interface. And say, hey, okay, Google, what's his real name? And it will know you're talking about Skrillex. Didn't really care that his real name was Sonny John Moore, but at least I could find that out if I wanted to. Um, no, no mention of the Skrillex branded Nexus Six. I thought no. that was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Here's your chance. Yeah, and, in, and in fact, no yeah. new devices. Uh, Jason's Nothing. tweeted. You know, there was no, no giveaway. There, the card cardboard yeah. cardboard was the only giveaway. There yeah. were no new. There was no new hardware. I think that's smart. I think that they had a accidentally created this crazy rush for Google I/O invites from people who weren't developers, just wanted to get free stuff. That's always a bad idea. Uh, so, um, all right, photos. Let's talk about photos. Uh, the it's still not clear whether they're extracting this capability from Google+, Plus, but they are updating the Photos app, which you probably already have if you're an Android device, mm -hmm. 
Uh, it will be available on iOS as well. The app will feature unlimited free storage of all of your photos up to 16 megapixels. It's and huge. all your videos up to 1080p. Free, unlimited, forever. It's awesome. Um, and that's available today, androidphotos.google.com and iOS. Isn't that great? Yeah. Uh, and, I, you know, I think the Google Plus is very telling. They showed a new share interface where you could uh, tap on one uh, photo and drag to, to lasso a bunch of photos. And then you could share to a web page, just a regular web page that no one has to log in to see. It's not Google Plus. It's not a social network. It's just a web page. I thought that was really telling, right? Because right now, sharing a photo in the context of Google Plus photos is posting it to Google Plus, right? And there's these prompts to share. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that that's a pretty telling indicator that Google Plus it, it, Photos is backing away from Google Plus. Not and then also, also when you share that URL, if the other person is a Google user with one click, they can save it to their cloud, and like now that. they've got all those yeah. photos. Yeah, yeah. so that's I'm real use that photo with sharing. My I mean, family so much. Yeah, nothing yeah. does it. No, I don't know of anything that shares photos that easily and that quickly. Uh, pinch to zoom was added. That's that's probably a. A sop to iOS users who would immediately say, where's my pinch to zoom? Mm -hmm. I, Apple has struggled a little bit with its Photos app uh, on iOS and Mac OS X. I've had some real problems with it. I know a lot of people have. Um, this is a good opportunity for Google to step in and say, we know how to do cloud services. Why don't you try a different Photos app? Albums and collections, animations. You can now create your own stories, create your own collages, in addition, I presume, I'm, I'm going to guess they're going to stay in Google Plus, continue to do the auto mm -hmm. collections, auto stories, auto awesome, but uh, give you more manual control if yeah. you're in. Which is great. There's been lots of times when I've gotten those stories and I've been like, well, you know, so my wife and I actually, uh, well, all my family uploads photos under my account. So that all our photos appear in one place and we can access them in one place. Yeah. Um, but what happens is. If you, if you try to do a story out of that, and my wife and I are in different places, then you get, oh, your trip to San Francisco, and then Ooh. you went to Berkeley, and oh. then you went to San Francisco. Interesting. And so <clears throat> having that manual, be able to do it manually and create your own stories like that is absolutely fantastic. That'll be really, really nice. Also, a lot of intelligence categorizing photos in the back end. Mm. Uh, you'll be able to do things like search for baseball, and it'll give you all the pictures of baseball or Snowstorm in Toronto. It'll give you all the Toronto geolocated pictures that have snow in them. Um, yeah. That's that's going to be great. Yeah. That's that's that, a really good idea. Yeah, that was cool. See, seeing you know, seeing search get utilized by Google, who you know, you know, are known for search yeah. uh, within the idea of you know, you have ten years worth of photos. How do you find that one moment? Um, giving you more power to find those photos is, I think, going to be key for this. So. We saw a, a brief look at Google Translate, which segued. Uh, into a, a considerable amount of sales information in terms of uh, for developers and developer platforms, ad platforms, um, well-dressed people talking about things I just really didn't care or understand. Isn't that interesting? They had the <laughs> they had the developer types talking about the more generic news and things, and then they had the marketing types talking to the developers about developer right. features. I thought that was really odd. Gina was excited I, about A/B really testing in the Play Store. I mean, that's yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I thought that was an interesting juxtaposition, actually, right? Because we have developers in the audience who want, kind of want to see somebody who looks like them on stage or having them talk about the big concepts, mm -hmm. which is what they want to the develop. They want developers hungry, you know, to get to the next billion, right? To think about opportunities in classrooms and out of their own lives, right? I mean, this is the problem that's sort of endemic to our industry is that we're all sort of making apps for ourselves. Um, so it's like reaching these new people. But yeah, the A-B testing in the Play Store looks awesome. So, and uh, and seeing, you can see now who, go, who looks at your app and then who converts into a purchase, what text, you can try different versions of your text and what descriptions perform better. So those are fantastic markets marketing tools for developers and companies and new developer pa uh, yeah developer pages so if you if you're a company that makes multiple apps if you're an indie developer who makes apps you can have a, your own page and 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 describe who you are and what drives you and just do some better branding there uh here's an interesting stat google sends 70 billion messages a day through its cloud messaging platform just threw that in gcm uh, is awesome yeah and yeah, I'm, I'm and really so glad it's working. It's Android, iOS, and Chrome now. I mean, as a developer, too. yeah, I mean, if, if I'm looking to do, you know, notification, push notifications across platforms, GCM, Google Cloud Messaging is a, is definitely a contender. Uh, AdMob, Google Analytics, uh, Play Services, blah, blah. Family Discovery Experience is kind of interesting. The new label, the Family Star label, 
uh, applied to apps will tell you it's safe. It actually has also a more more granular breakdown by age groups. There's a family zone on Google Play uh, where it's all Family Star approved. That makes a lot of sense. It's funny, as you see, uh, uh, Google staffers reach their 30s and start having children. I think you're going to see more and more yeah. features uh, for kids. <laughs> oh, oh, there's kids in the world. Oh, this is a new experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, parental filtering, that kind of thing. And some of this stuff is, of course, required but uh, by law, but uh, some of it is stuff Google's doing, and I think, doing well. They talked a little bit about Audacity and the nano degree, uh, and now Cardboard kind of the last uh, big announcement. They announced the cardboard would now be 30% <laughs> more cardboard uh, in order to hold the Google Nexus 6 and other 6-inch phones. He said there are a million cardboard viewers out there. Um, I don't know if that's a million that they, they gave away and then were recycled or if they're in use. I guess they don't really know. The new cardboard has a plastic button. Uh, and the cardboard SDK has been extended so that you could put an iPhone in there as well as an Android phone. That's a big deal, cardboard for iPhone as well as Android. Mm -hmm. um, they talked about an, a, a tool, I guess, called Google Expeditions VR field trips designed for classrooms where a teacher could actually take kids here, here, here. Um, and uh, I'd love to see Google doing more. I mean, they have Google for education, and they're doing some initiatives there. I'd, I, I'd love to see them do more for the classroom because yeah. I think they're uniquely positioned to do a lot yeah. more. Um, but this was good. Was good. Yeah, I don't think it's as elaborate as it could be. Right. Uh, I mean, think about what Apple did, right, back right. in the— It was very good for Apple. Late 80s, 90s. Yeah. Um, it was really good for them. I think Google has a, such a strong argument in education, mm -hmm. and, and we do know that the uh, number one— Computer in education is the Chromebook, um, but uh, yeah, I think they, they really could go could they do could. more. They could uh, successfully. And I'll go do that. Will you? I'll go do that. Google, let me know. I'll come run your education platform. Google also announced tools <laughs> for people who wish to do virtual reality uh, video called Jump. It includes a, a design for a 16 camera rig. The plans are free if you want to build your own, but you can also go to GoPro and buy one. Um, I would guess that's $6,000, thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, but uh, more importantly, they created a software, the, uh, the VR assembler, that will stitch it all together. Looks like it did a pretty good job. And they said they, there is a player for this. The player is YouTube. Uh, YouTube already has 360-degree videos. Uh, and I think they have, don't they have uh, cardboard-compatible dual screen videos on YouTube or not. They will if they don't already. I think they do. I've got to imagine that for the camera bit, uh, that real estate would be all over that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, those walkthroughs yeah. walk and tour yeah. home tours. Yeah. yeah, totally. That and travel. Tra that's a yep. big, a big yep. sector. Yep. Absolutely. So. But the key is playback. Having YouTube supported is brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yep. actually necessary. Uh, they mentioned the self-driving. That was it for cardboard. They mentioned the self-driving car and loon, but didn't say anything new about it, just that it's... It's happening, and it's a success. And uh, that wrapped it up uh, a, a fairly quick two hours and 15 minutes. As you say, Gina, no new hardware. That's kind of uh, interesting. A well, departure, we, we, an interesting departure. Yeah. Well, no, well, we, we talked about this a bit on All About Android, and, and as much as I want a, a, a new Nexus, a 5.5-inch Nexus or a 5-inch Nexus, um, it's at the point now they didn't have new hardware, that much hardware last year, Google I.O. The hardware announcements come closer to the fall, yeah. closer to the holidays. Um, we'll see that in like probably in September or so when they announce the new phones. Um, but well, yeah, I, I think, think that, they're also content to let third-party phones uh do their own thing you know android yeah. wear uh, is a really rich ecosystem at this point and uh yeah. notice everybody was wearing android wear watches they celebrated the diversity of the number of manufacturers i think they can do the same with yeah. phones at this point they did talk a little bit about android one and google's plans to get into the the next generation of uh, smartphone buyers no new chromecast though which was interesting i thought no for sure they too. were going to talk about chromecast yeah. they talked about it a little bit but no chromecast too so and no mention of the Chrome bit or no mention of any of the things they're doing, you know, in, in on that side of the platform of the hardware platform, Chrome OS, um, that sort of thing. No, there were no demos of Android apps running on Chrome and that sort of thing that they've been playing with for the past couple of months. Um, yeah. I thought that was interesting. So, yeah. yeah, it was fairly demo light, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Very demo light. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so it was all about software and that's about it. Uh, cool. And uh, 
Uh, in some to some degree, maybe they saved those announcements for elsewhere. For instance, today they announced uh, the opening of Inbox. Um, they, uh, um, you know, they didn't mention uh, anything about uh, the Tango tablet, which was announced last year at uh, Google I/O, but went invite free today. So maybe they just decided some of this stuff we don't need to put in the keynote. The fact that both those things were released today tells me they were originally in the keynote. And uh, we're cut for time. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was that important. Well, mm -hmm. it looks it looks as if they were trying to tell a story in this yes. keynote. And the keynote the keynote yeah. was about re was about reach and and billions of people and and uh, you know spreading information around the world. And this is the ways that we do it and the way you interact with that information. And so maybe the you know it, inbox being not invite free doesn't tie into that story anymore. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Well, I want to thank you. Uh, final thoughts, Gina Trapani, ThinkUp.com. What do you think? Are you happy? You know, it was a solid, solid keynote, very developer focused. Look, I always go into these things, you know, kind of hoping for that huge, splashy consumer product launch. But like, that's what not what this is. It's a developer conference. And um, so I'm excited. I'm excited about Android M. I wanted Android news. I was happy with the Android news that I got. I'm excited about M. I, I want to try it out. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I think it was a pr pretty good, pretty good keynote. I'm excited about photos and I'm excited to play around with the Play Store and, and AB test some new copy for my app. <laughs> I do think, my developer yeah, page. if you, if you you are an app developer. This the all was very good news for you. Uh, we yeah. didn't we didn't mention uh, the test platform as well, which is I think important to uh, mm -hmm. developers. Yep. Um, cloud test. Mm -hmm. Cloud test. Ron Richards. Yeah, I'm not that upset that I missed it. I'm not that upset that I didn't get an invite. So uh, there you go. The, That's all you can ask for. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's some interesting stuff. I think a lot of the Google Play Store stuff and the developer stuff is the real dark horse. And it might seem kind of like we kind of zoned out a little during it, but um, that's the stuff that can really be impactful on the developer level, less so on the Google level. Um, right. And so I'm excited to see what comes out of it. I am surprised that while we knew that Android M was coming out, I am surprised that they're looking at a Q3 release of it. Um, you know, it looks as if the development life cycle for Lollipop is going be shorter than we thought um and if they say three three yeah that could be uh yeah. anything from what uh, uh sounds June, like it's just in time for the holidays july, right? july september. to september yeah yeah, july to, yeah. yeah. But um, it'll be curious to see how that affects the uh, penetration levels of the OSs through devices over the next year or so as we add yet another dessert to the mix. And folks in the chat room are saying that Jason Hal uh, saw uh, took a photo or saw photos of milkshakes at Google I.O. So oh, it maybe milkshake. it's milkshake. Maybe mm -hmm. not. Oh, mm -hmm. They're just trying to confuse mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Okay. Shake, milk, way. <laughs> I don't know. There's milk in there somewhere. That's the yes, important definitely. part. Um, what do you think? Anything, Aaron Newcomb, that stood out for you? Oh, I, I was surprised at how introspective it was. I would, I was surprised at how muted it was. I thought we would yeah. get a, a few more bigger announcements, but um, you know, I think definitely uh, Google's definitely headed in the right direction in a lot of these areas. I'm going to go uh, out to the uh, uh, the grocery store right now and buy some Brillo pads uh, to celebrate uh, because that's the that's the thing that I'm most excited about is to see where that's going to go. I think uh, Google has tremendous ability. Uh, to push into and to drive the Internet of Things into more of a, a, a into reality. So I was really excited about that. I want to thank our guests. Oh, and we did get one giveaway at Google I.O., the new slightly larger Google Cardboard. Sorry, no pixels for you. Three, three cents worth of cardboard. That's what you get. <laughs> and a couple, a couple of magnets. This is, you know, this, come in. this is the Google I.O. of last year. It's very yeah. similar in many ways to the Google yeah. I.O. Of, of last year. Thank you, Gina Trapani. We'll see you very soon. Find her at thinkup.com. Uh, Thank you. And uh, just great to see you. All the best. Yeah, great to see you. Thanks yeah. for having me. See you, uh, see you next week on Twig. Yes. Oh, you're going to be on next week? Great. I, I believe so, yeah. Uh, you you we'll said it. So, so you weren't now. So now I am. I'm holding <laughs> I'll see you to you it. Then. <laughs> Ron Richards, you'll see him every Tuesday on All About Android. Thank you, Ron, for being here. Yep. My pleasure. Take care. He's happy he didn't get an invitation now. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, Aaron Newcomb uh, from NetApp and uh, regular on Floss Weekly, All About Android this week in Google and wherever we can find him. That's right. Yep. Yeah, we find him a spot because we always love glad to you be here. This we is fun. It. Our hearty thanks to Braintree. Our sponsor for all breaking news and event coverage on uh, Twit Braintree was part of the announcement. Their V.0 SDK, which for mobile app developers makes it easy to take payments of almost any kind, now is also Android Pay compatible, along with Apple Pay and PayPal and Venmo and uh, credit cards and, of course, uh, Bitcoin, because don't all your customers want to pay for things in Bitcoin? The Braintree V.0 SDK is a simple, small snippet of code, works on almost every any platform. You'll be up and running in 10 minutes. You want to check it out? 
and get $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash twit. And if you want to check out Android Pay integration, braintreepayments.com slash Android Pay. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks to our producer, Jason Cleanthus, and our, our great studio crew for uh, putting this all together. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>